all four hours of our show. Okay, we are going to begin with some real serious stuff. That devastating partial building collapsed near Miami as we hear from eyewitnesses and a resident, one who was rescued from her balcony. And we've got an exclusive interview this morning with the nation's first ever second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, married to Kamala Harris, our vice president. How he's getting used to that historic role in Washington. And get out your sunscreen Why one entrepreneur is trying to convince us to wear it Every single day. I try to wear it every day. Got to protect the real estate, Hoda. You, you got to do it. And hey, guys, do you want even more of us? No. Well, you can get it now. <laughs> Jen and I are on TikTok. Okay. It's what? Not, yeah. It's not going to be pretty. We have our own account. We're going to do all kinds of funny moments and dances and stuff. So there's always more. Let's get this party started, Hody. Time for Today in 30. We want to get right to the breaking news overnight. That building collapse in South Florida. Dozens of fire and rescue units responding to the emergency call just before 2 a.m. Yeah, it happened in the city of Surfside. That's just north of Miami Beach. The structure is a 12-story residential condominium building. Yeah, the rescue operation has been unfolding all morning long. And earlier, we saw crews pulling a young boy out of that rubble. Yeah, incredible pictures. We're going to talk with a woman who was rescued from her balcony. But first, NBC's Carrie Sanders joins us from the scene. Carrie, what is the very latest? Well, there is an urgent search and rescue underway right now, trying to find survivors. They've already been able to pull out 25 people, two from the side of the building that actually collapsed. The authorities say that they'll get to why this happened later, but right now, those who have gotten out, the survivors are understandably numb. This morning, shocking images of a Florida condominium building partially collapsed. Firefighters working frantically to extract victims. This young boy pulled to safety. There may be so many more still inside. Most were unaware what happened. Some wondering, was it lightning followed by thunder? It's crazy. I mean, you think something you've seen in an earthquake or something, but not not something like this. The 12-story building with 136 units pancaked, trapping people in their apartments, others believed to be crushed. They pulled 35 occupants that were trapped inside the, uh, the building. In addition to those 35, 10 were uh, assessed and treated. Two were uh, transported to various hospitals. Search and rescue efforts are still ongoing. Vacationers at a nearby hotel described the moment the building collapsed. The building shook. And then I looked out the window. I thought it was like a storm or something coming in. And when the dust cleared, there was the back half of the building or back two thirds of the building was gone. It's down to the ground. As each hour goes by, family members who cannot find their loved ones growing more anxious. Officers helping with the massive search and rescue. Victims advocates assisting residents who just lost their homes. Officials say the 40-year-old building recently began an inspection. It had not been completed. The focus this morning, a feverish effort to find anyone who may still be alive in the rubble. Every minute in this search can make a huge difference. And of course, the big difficulty is for those who have loved ones that they have not heard from gathering outside the building, hoping against hope that their loved ones somehow were able to survive. This might be still in the rubble, but able to hang on for rescuers to get to them. Meantime, the White House has been in contact with officials here, telling them that FEMA is available to assist them if it's needed. Those who were inside say that they heard a boom, a boom, a boom, and that last boom is when it all came down. And now the big question yeah, is, Carrie, so why did this happen? You can really see that damage Guys. and destruction. We want to bring in Ophi Osen Cohen. She lives on the fourth floor of that complex. She was rescued right off of her balcony. Ophi, first of all, it is so good to see you. We're so happy that you are okay, but I can't imagine that you were just tucked into bed 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning and you saw and felt things. Describe what you went through. So we were sound asleep, as were probably most people in the building. We heard uh, a weird sound. It could have been thunder, but it didn't, it didn't really sound like thunder. And we felt the building shake. And we knew something was up. It rattled us. We immediately got out of bed. We looked around. We looked out the window. Our apartment faces the street. 
and we, I saw a plume of smoke coming up. Very unusual shape and just everything about it was unusual. A few cars, not many at that hour of the night. And very soon thereafter, a police car that pulled up and I heard a neighbor yell out, what's going on? And the policeman said, we don't know yet. He was running around with a flashlight at that moment. Um, shortly thereafter, we decided we wanted to get out. And so we put on some clothes, as you can imagine, we were in our PJs, um, grabbed a few items, you know, the essential things. And when I opened the door to my apartment, it leads to a long hallway. And all I saw was debris and the partial um, debris was covering the, part, the door ne next to us as well. Um, there's another staircase uh, that we took and went down and saw several other people that were in the staircase. We tried to exit on the pool deck and could not open the door. It was jammed. So we continued down and went down to the um, garage, but it was full of water. Um, up to our ankles already. We didn't know what was going on at that point, and we realized that we weren't gonna be able to get out through there e either. So we decided to go back up the stairs, the door to the building itself, we couldn't get it back in because the electricity was out. We m went back up the stairs, we took two elderly people with us that we didn't know, we met them in the staircase to our apartment um, and decided to go out to the balcony and wave down fire rescue. And they are heroes, they're just unbelievable human beings. Um, and they came up with a ladder and a bucket and, and got the four of us down. Uh, it, it is just overwhelming to see when we opened the door and saw that the building had collapsed. It was just surreal, really surreal. Ophi, I, I mean, what you have just described is absolutely terrifying and, and, and going all the way down and bringing uh, your neighbors with you and then being rescued. And, uh, you know, this is a, a residential condo building. It's off season in Miami. Do you have a sense of how full it was, how many of your neighbors may have been sleeping in their beds in, in, the, in the portion of the building that went down. Right. So it's a 12-story building. There are about 186 apartments. I can't tell you exactly how many people were there, but, you know, with COVID, people weren't traveling as much, and um, also people were visiting. So it's hard to say how many people. Um, we didn't see a lot of people initially because we were probably one of the first to get out. Um, eventually, we walked about five or six blocks to the community center, which was a station, you know, a gathering station, and many people came after that and others were waiting to hear from their loved ones. Um, so I, I don't know how many people, I can't really estimate that at the moment, but people in the building are snowbirds, others, you know, come on the weekends, they have a, a home in other parts of Miami. Um, and things have been busy, you know, in the pool area, so I would imagine there were quite a few people there. Ophi, we did see a young boy being rescued out of the rubble, and I just wonder, while you were walking around down there, did you hear anybody? Uh, unfortunately, we did hear screams. I, I don't even want to think about it. We did hear screams, but I couldn't tell where they were coming from, from the rubble, from the apartments. People were on their balconies, waving flashlights, yelling to the, to the firefighters. So I, I'm not exactly sure where the sounds were coming from, to be honest. Well, Ophi, Osen, Cohen, we're happy that you are okay. Thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. We wish you and your family all the best. I can only imagine the trauma you're feeling right now. Thank you so much. Stick around because there's much more coming up on Today in 30. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.
Killer Row, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're back with an NBC News exclusive conversation with the nation's first ever second gentleman. <laughs> That's right. Doug Imhoff got that title when his wife, Kamala Harris, made history as the first woman to become vice president. And as she breaks barriers in her role, Imhoff is defining his own. NBC's uh, chief White House correspondent, Peter Alexander, sat down with him in Chicago, his very first interview since the inauguration. Hey, Peter, good morning. Craig, Hoda, Savannah, good morning to all of you. Second gentleman Doug M. Hoff tells me that he is not a political advisor for his wife, just really a proud husband, he says, trying to support her and the Biden administration. He's already embracing this role, traveling to 17 states in these first several months, focusing heavily on beating the pandemic. As you noted, I caught up with him in Chicago yesterday, where he was promoting vaccinations, especially for communities of color. Even as the White House concedes, it'll fall short of its goal to have 70% of adults with one shot by the 4th of July. The nation's first second gentleman, Doug Emhoff, is out front in the effort to combat COVID. It's going to be fine. I have my two times. No problem. How do you convince the holdouts to get a shot? Just trying to talk about facts. They're safe, they're effective, they're free, they're available, and they work. Emhoff says he prefers to steer clear of politics, but his wife, Vice President Kamala Harris, is facing renewed scrutiny after Wednesday's announcement that she'll go to the border for the first time tomorrow. As you've witnessed, Republicans have made a big thing out of this. Former President Trump today said the reason she's going this week is because he's going next week. What do you make of that? Kamala Harris is not driven by any political issues or political pressure. She's really just doing what the right thing is to do for this very important job that the president entrusted her with. You're a husband. When you see the attacks, when you see the criticism, what do you think? Look, you're a husband too, Peter. No one wants to see anyone they love attacked or criticized, but look, that's, that's part of what she signed up for in this life of public service. It's part of the territory, and for her, like if you could see what I see behind the scenes, it's, she's just focused on the work working hard and getting it done for the American people. As the first woman, black, South Asian vice president, do you think that your wife is treated differently because she's a woman and a woman of color? Um, probably, but so what? I mean, she has faced challenges uh, as a groundbreaker her, her whole career. I think she said at times, you know, there's when you're breaking barriers, there's breaking involved, and in breaking means you might get cut sometimes, but that's okay. It's worth it because she's leading a path for others. Emhoff left a successful career as an entertainment lawyer to support his wife's ambitions. What message do you hope that your experience sends to other men? Men have to step up and step up for the people that they love and actually show it. It's manly to love and care about uh, others. Still, Emhoff admits being thrust into the glaring public spotlight has been jarring. The moment his new reality sunk in. It was the COVID memorial on this Lincoln steps and the reflecting pond. And that's when it really hit me. Oh, my goodness. This is really happening. It sunk and in you, there's the cameras and the Secret Service and you walk out and there's pres soon to be President Biden and First Lady. There have been light moments too, like in April when he was caught on camera blowing kisses to his wife ahead of the president's joint address, a clip that went viral. Do you ever stop in those moments and think, how did I get here? Every minute of every day. And sometimes she and I will look at each other and just, I'll say, you're the vice president of the United States. And she's like, you're the second gentleman of the United States. So it's just, it, it is a little surreal. A lot of people are already talking about who the next president's going to be. Do you want her to run? Is that something you guys talk about? And we're two people who are not talking about that. We're just so focused on... So that's hard for me to believe, that you, like, you walk into the White House, you, you don't ever say, man, can you imagine being here? We've spent zero seconds talking about that, just so focused on task at hand. 
His wife, of course, not the only history maker in the family. Mr. Emhoff is the first Jewish spouse of a vice president. And he tells me that he feels this unique responsibility to speak out against hate and the recent rise in anti-Semitism. As for the vice president's trip to the border tomorrow, he called her recent visit to Mexico and Guatemala successful, despite criticism from both Republicans and Democrats, and says this is just the next phase in her effort to address the root causes of migration. Back to you guys. Al, we gotta get some birthdays in. Absolutely, let's do it. Spin those sweet jars of smuckers. And first up, we've got a happy 106th birthday to Jeanette Wellendinger, a baker from Armont, New York. She created her own cookbook so her family can have her favorite recipes in just one place. Gertrude Kaplan from Queens Village, New York, 101 years old, loves spending time with the four grandkids and nine great grandkids. Happy 101st birthday to Frank Wenzel, a pilot from Irvine, California. He's developed 17 patents wow. through his work in the aerospace industry. Felix Pesteris of Joliet, Illinois, 100, receiving multiple medals for his service to our country during World War II. Congratulations, sir. We salute you for your service. Miss Ruth Brown of Nashua, New Hampshire, celebrating her 108th birthday. She'll celebrate the big day with a party in her honor. Happy 102nd birthday to Winifred Dolezal, a retired teacher from North Walton, yeah. Ohio. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. I joined Ellen on her set. What's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What's about to happen on our plaza is you're all going to get your very first COVID vaccine. I'm excited. She's excited. Three, two, one, champion. So grateful. Is that close to crime? Here we go. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Hi, my friends at Today All Day. I am so excited about my She Made It today. It is uh, the CEO and founder of Supergoop and her passion and excitement for the brand just comes through the screen. And I learned so much about the importance of sunscreen, not just in the summer, but 365 days a year. It's a really important story for you and your family. So I hope you'll tune in and I'll see you soon. It is time for She Made It with an entrepreneur on a mission to change how we see sunscreen. Today, lifestyle and commerce contributor Jill Martin has her story. Good morning to you. Hi, guys. Good morning. And her passion just comes right through the screen. Supergoop founder Holly Thaggard wants us to know wearing sunscreen is not just for summer, but for every single day. Her multi-million dollar brand was created 16 years ago, and it all started from a product with a purpose. Take a look. You have to inspire people and, and build beautiful products so that people want to put it into their life every single day. There's no doubt Supergoop founder Holly Thaggard is the queen of sunscreen. Are you wearing a shirt that says sunscreen all over it? Wear sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> But before she was shaking things up in the world of SPF, Holly was a teacher and a professional harpist. What I find the most fascinating, you 
we're in a totally different world. I was a third grade school teacher out of college and I still believe that I'm still teaching. You don't necessarily need to be in a classroom to be a teacher. 16 years ago, Holly was inspired to change what the world thought about sunscreen when a close friend of hers was diagnosed with skin cancer at the age of 29. Another good college friend of mine who's now a renowned dermatologist said to me, you know, Holly, it's really that little bit of incidental damage that you get every single day. Um, It's not about beaches and bikinis. Was that the first sort of aha moment that you were like, okay, we need to pay attention? Absolutely. There are not many cancers that are primarily preventable with a magic lotion. When I looked at the category, though, the chemical formulas were itchy and irritating, and sunscreen had a very negative reputation back in 16 years ago. I thought, gosh, if we want people to wear SPF every single day, there needed to be a product. And so I I started to dream about SPF. Holly began meeting with chemists to create a formula that was both clean and free of harmful ingredients. So after bootstrapping her business, Supergoop was born in 2005. As a mother of two, her original business plan was to get sunscreen into classrooms, but discovered it wasn't that easy. I quickly learned that it's thought of as an over-the-counter drug. No one had advocated to carve a policy out that would allow SPF to be brought to school or available in the classroom. Undeterred, Holly pivoted her sunscreen brand to retail for selling in local stores until a buyer from Sephora's headquarters in San Francisco discovered her product. She called the number on the packaging, which was, of course, my cell phone. Right, you're like, call me. (laughs) And uh, she said, you know, I don't think you're quite ready for Sephora, but I want to give you some tips and tricks and then keep in touch with me. And one of those was, you've got to get your press built up. And we spent two years building my press book. I dialed her back and I left her a voicemail that I was coming to San Francisco and I was ready to sit down and talk. She didn't call me back, but I flew out there with no meetings on the calendar. I was completely broke. And the first night I got there, my phone lit up. It said Sephora. And she said, I think you might be here. Um, Can you come in and sit down and talk to us? The meeting was a success, and in 2011, Supergoop was on Sephora shelves all across the country, 365 days a year. And now you're a multi, multi-million dollar company. We are, and we've been, uh, we're going into our third year of profitability, which is so exciting for me because if you're not profitable, you're not sustainable. Today, Holly's original mission of providing SPF to young kids has come full circle. With their ounce-by-ounce giving program, Supergoop ships a free pump of sunscreens to classrooms across America. Do you feel like you've made enough of an impact or do you still feel like you have so much to change? Today, fast forward, I think it's because of our products, it's because of the fun and playful spirit of this brand that we've been able to change and actually create a new category. What's next for Supergoop? Oh gosh, Jill, more of the same. Game-changing SPF innovation that's never been done before is what wakes me up in the morning and helping others inspire a world in which they embrace this habit and embrace it as a family. Holly is clearly really passionate about sun care education, especially for young kids. She's met with folks on Capitol Hill to advocate for policies to allow SPF in classrooms and today, Nearly 30 states are adopting new plans to allow sunscreen in schools. And guys, I love the moment where she flew to San Francisco without the appointment and then got it. That was that pivotal moment where things shifted for her. So your stories for entrepreneurs, absolutely. That's why she made it. That's why (laughs) she made it. Full circle. Thank you, Jill. America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland, reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. 
right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Okay, so anyway, we're learning and we're a work in progress, and we're going to get better every time. And apparently, we got some advice from some of the biggest TikTok influencers. Donna, what do you got? Yeah, okay, this is really exciting. Guys, please follow us. We really want you to. We want to say we're By the way, Donna's sort of like the embarrassed daughter that's like, okay, no, but I feel okay. like I'm the Kris Jenner. I'm like, you're doing amazing. <laughs> well, that's true. You're a momager. But um, if, you, if you follow us, have your kids follow us, please. Anyways, we got some great TikTok influencers who gave us some advice. First is LaRon Hines. I love his profile. Okay. He gained fame, fame quizzing preschoolers with questions like, are you smart? Oh, that's so <laughs> oh, I'm so really I'll cute. That. He has almost 8 million followers, what? so he clearly knows what he's talking about. Okay. Let's check him out. I'm LaRon. I'm going to give you guys a couple tips on how to grow your account. We're going to start with step one, and that is be consistent. You cannot post one video one day, wait a whole week, and then post six videos the next day. That just does not work. Moving on to tip number two, follow trends. TikTok is an app with many trends, many songs, and many challenges that go viral daily. Moving on to tip number three, and I feel like this one is the most important, have fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're having have fun. fun. Yes. And, and it's going to be organic content, you know? Really how we feel is what you're going to see. Okay. So it'll be fun. We also have, you know, ladies, we all wear makeup all the time. One of the biggest makeup TikTok influencers is Michaela Nogaria. And um, she has 5.7 million wow. followers. Wow. So she also knows what she's talking about. Let's check out her advice. I heard you guys are starting a TikTok of your own, and I want to give you some of my best tips and tricks. Post as much as you can. For me, I try to post at least three times a day. Number two, remain authentic and genuine in your videos. People want to see the real you. I wish you the best of luck on your TikTok journey, and if you ever need makeup advice, I'm your girl. We do. Look we at do. Her, look at all of our makeup. I know. That's beautiful. We really do need okay, advice. I, we're a little nervous because really the, the advice is to... Post a ton and well, be yourself. Okay, we're starting, we we're starting slow, yeah. baby steps, okay? okay? So maybe we'll do a couple okay. a week and see okay. how it goes. Okay, finally, I like this millennial Jenna. We're millennials. This guy is relatable. His name is Rod. I am. Thank you. Say it again. We're, you're a millennial, oh, no. too. Okay, go ahead. His name is Rod. He has some fun advice. Let's check it out. I heard you're making your own account. So here are some tips when you're making your first video. First thing, we wanna see those beautiful faces. So finding good lighting is really important. My advice would be is to find that perfect spot in your house where you take your selfies. This is mine. <laughs> oh, look at that. Should we pose for our selfie now? Just give us your best face. Oh God, I don't have, I don't know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thank you, Donna. Hey, today in 30, we just hey! launched. Our Hoda and Jenna TikTok page. We started! We're on TikTok! We just, okay, and we're gonna get better every time. We loved it though. We what did you fun. think of the dance? I loved yeah. him. Walker Hayes yeah. was fine, like and his why? Movie, <laughs> we were kind of intimidated we were by him. Kind of, yes, we were in awe. And we couldn't dance with anything. Oh, and but you know what? We tried. I couldn't dance either, but I was trying to support them like Kris Jenner. She yeah, was. she's our momager. <laughs> All right, you're going to be. TikTok. I know. Can you believe it? Is that ridiculous? Yeah. All right, you're going to want to be with us tomorrow on today. One of our favorite guests, Jamie Lee Curtis, will be stopping by. Oh, I think she tried to get you to run for president last time <laughs> she was there. We love Stop Jamie it. Lee. We'll see if we can get you to run. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow for Friday. 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 Exactly. That works.
they are roads less traveled these days, away from the city where many are giving all they've got just to get by. Yet they are places where the sense of true community remains steadfast. like at the Conneaut Valley Elementary School in Crawford County, Pennsylvania. Hey class, are you ready? Yes. How long have you been teaching here? Since 1986. Really? Really. Wow. You got it. 35 years in the classroom for Barb Hine, delighted to be teaching first grade. Everything is new with the kids. They discover things and every year it seems like it's the same things. Their world is just enlightened and the light bulbs click on and I get to see that every day. Are you ready? Yeah. One day, about a year and a half ago, Barb's light bulb clicked on. She noticed something amiss. On really bad weather days, we'd have recess inside. When he would get very active, he'd lose color in his face and he'd sit down and it was hard for him to play. He is Harrison Connor, something of the apple of this teacher's eye. Oh, he's an amazing little guy. He is so much fun in class. He loves to learn new things. The epitome of first grade. You could have a hundred of him in a classroom. Barb notified the principal and the school nurse. Look at me! Because most of the kids, they are sweating, they are dripping, their faces are beet red, they can't wait for water. And here he is, pale, sitting down, and it just wasn't right. The nurse informed Harrison's mom that school closed for Christmas break. You come back from Christmas break and what? And one of these little, little guys from my class walks in the doorway, makes a beeline to my desk, and says, Mrs. Hine, Harrison went on a helicopter ride to the hospital. What was wrong? He was diagnosed with leukemia. With Harrison too sick to come to school, Barb made sure he didn't lose touch with his class. I always did story after recess time, so we'd call him on the Zoom meeting, read a story, and he'd get to listen to that story and see his friends and everybody's yelling, hey Harrison, it's like he was there. Then came the pandemic, schools closed. But in the fall, Conneaut Valley reopened. Good morning. Harrison though, was still stuck at home and often not up to cyber sessions. Here we go. Into that void stepped guess who? So you're teaching first graders full yes. time. Yes. And then after school you would go to Harrison's? Yes. Every day. Every day. Classic rock blasting on the radio. Barb can't wait to get there. The twenty minute drive blows by. The genre is in masks plexiglass, a shield. Protection, yes. <laughs> Barriers, no. It was a joy because I knew he wanted to learn. He couldn't wait. He was so excited. And he'd have his off days if medicine was causing him to not feel up to it. But we made it through and he always did his best. From time to time, the school sets up Zoom sessions for Harrison and his pals. How you doing, bro? Good. The boy's goofiness tempered a bit this day, perhaps by our presence, but still plenty goofy. <laughs> Harrison shares the screen with his mom, Suzanne, and little brother. It was without hesitation that she said, I'll teach him, I'll do it. Ever since the minute he was diagnosed, and I'm gonna get emotional, <laughs> um, she has been, absolutely amazing. It, it's incredibly, incredibly special. I am loving the look on Harrison's face. That's a million dollar smile right there. We fought hard for this little face. <laughs> <laughs> I think about him every day. Yeah. He's so lucky to have you. I'm lucky to be his teacher. I'm the lucky one. <laughs> oh my God. I, I was there and it brings me to tears. Uh, good news wow. about Harrison is yep. he's in remission. He has oh, another God. year and a half. Oh. 
of treatment, though, oh. before they hope he's all the way out of the woods. And uh, about Barb Heim, at one point I said, do you feel like you helped save his yeah. life? And she said, no, no. She was the most reluctant person in years that I've had the opportunity to interview. She said, yeah. it's not about me. Mm. It's about how this school came together. Mm. Oh. Everybody's Harrison Strong. <laughs> she goes to the second grade teacher, gets the, the, the lesson plan, goes off, teaches. <laughs> if there's something amiss, somebody else in the school takes somebody else's right. place. It's everyone coming together to make sure this kid gets I better. I mean, Barb wow. is extraordinary. Right? When you said she's been teaching there since 86, a lot of teachers who've been through yeah. a classroom for that many years don't have the exact same feeling that she has. <laughs> she she loves says it every day. she feels like she's never worked yeah. a day wow. in her life. And, oh, by the way, hmm. yeah. she's getting ready to retire. Oh. No. Not I wait, know. When? When? I know. Oh. End of this oh. year. Don't oh. leave, Barb. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was top of the heap right there. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends at Today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes, yes. Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Welcome back this morning on Today Goes Green, the environmentally friendly hobby that has helped a lot of people through this difficult past year. Bird watching. Yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> our own Harry Smith joined the ranks of people getting outdoors and Back to nature. Hey, Harry. Hey, oh, we're not right in New York City right now. We're in South Salem, about an hour north of town. But one of the best places to bird watch in all of America is New York, the concrete jungle. But in Central Park, take a look and take a listen. We were not but a few steps into Central Park's ramble when... This guy right here. Yeah. And he's a what? White-throated sparrow. Until that moment, I assumed all sparrows dressed alike. So these sparrows are part of kind of the first big wave of migrants that are going to be on their way through the area. And yeah. this is a good, good place to see them. We are with Cornell University ornithologist Andrew Farnsworth, a sort of Bill Nye of birds, if you will. Did it surprise you in the last year as COVID and the pandemic took over that people, it seemed like, went crazy for birds? It was not a surprise. This kind of uh, situation where people want to be a part of nature, and especially in a time when there's a lot of emotional challenge and a need to reconnect with something, anything, and the connection with birds because they are beautiful, they sing, they do cool things. Like that robin you shrewdly observe hanging around all winter. Turns out some are true frequent flyers. There are some that are residents here, but there are also birds that migrate to New York that spend the winter. There are birds that breed here that leave New York and disappear for the winter. So even though it looks like robin is always here all the time, there's tremendous flux in this species. Farnsworth has traveled the world observing, studying birds. An avian ally, it seems sometimes the birds came to him. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That is just a great looking bird. I'm sorry, have we seen the warbler? I'm a little high from that. <laughs> Warblers are the epitome of spring migration. Bird watching can be mesmerizing. Great way to engage and also disconnect both. I like that phrase, engage and disconnect. 
easy enough to see why so many recently flocked to this pastime, like Sheldon Goodrich. What does it do for you to come out and watch? Uh, it's, it's, it's peaceful. It's, it's, I mean, especially now in the spring, the sounds of the birds, um, sometimes just sitting and hearing the water, hearing the birds, watching the behavior, it's, it's, it's peaceful. But for birds, the world is not as welcoming as it once was. How are our friends the birds doing these days? That's a good question. It does vary by species, but if we think about bird populations as a whole, in the last 50 years, there have been precipitous declines. Birds are in fact the proverbial canary in the coal mine of the environment. The North American bird population is down by three billion since 1970. If we're thinking about birds as uh, indicators of our environment, what does three billion birds lost say about the challenges our ecosystems are facing around the planet? Nearby, a massive barred owl has been perched for months. I check her when I can, and most of the time she's there. Isn't that something? Oh, it's great. It's great. As if to remind us that birds are a cherishable, but also perishable, gift of nature, not to be taken for granted. And I've been listening to a chorus of birds this morning. Mm. House wren. <laughs> On cue. Could you hear it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And for people who want to get into this, there are so many sites. Cornell, for instance, has this amazing ornithology department. They have a great eBird website. You can get into it. I've seen one for the state of Minnesota. There are all kinds of them. To, to help you take a little tiny, tiny steps into this amazing, amazing avian world. It's, mm -hmm. it's just terrific. I feel more peaceful just after yeah. that story. I wonder yeah. if the birds are on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Al, do you know the difference between a bird watcher and a birder? Uh, no. Bird watcher, they say, is just somebody who just observes birds. Mm -hmm. But a birder is somebody who will travel to go look at birds. Oh, mm. right. Wow. I guess you're well, they a keep lists. A lot of these folks keep lists, and they want to make sure, oh, I haven't gotten the something something sap sucker yet right. so they ah. you know take off to go Seek find it yeah. something something sap, sap sucker, sucker. Yeah. All right. there there is. Is. Yeah. our local it. birder harry yeah. smith the lost kitchen in freedom maine has the aura of perfection the setting the preparation and presentation of the food and the proprietress erin french all perfect Thank you, cheers, enjoy. <laughs> There's no greater joy than creating this dish and putting all this time and thought and effort in, thinking every little thing out, putting it down and sharing this. It's so intimate. But who would guess that the person who's providing the experience has been to hell and back? Someone described it, oh, if a Disney princess opened a restaurant. And I was like, oh, if you only knew. <laughs> Aaron French's memoir, Finding Freedom, is a page-turning, tear-provoking recollection of a life that was anything but perfect. I had plenty of big dreams. I you know, always thought that I needed to get out of freedom to, to make a better life, and I wanted to be a doctor. So it was off to college in Boston. But two years later... What was it like to come home and tell your parents that you were pregnant? My father was completely enraged. I mean, through the entire process was just extremely stressful. No more college, no medical degree, no husband or partner. I considered myself a gigantic failure. And yet... Even though I didn't think highly of myself, I still had a lot of hope. And that's what I held on to, like I was going to fix this. Erin's hope turned into a dream, inspired in no small part by her father, with whom she had a difficult relationship. But there were those beautiful moments when, and every beautiful moment and loving moment and memory that I have of him always involves food. Her father owned and operated a diner where Erin worked from the time she was 14, where she learned even the simplest dish prepared well could change a customer's day. There is a bit of romance to it, even if it's, if it's a diner. There's something that's captivating. You're feeding people, you're caring for people. Erin, the single mom, found love, or so she thought. She married and opened the first Lost Kitchen in nearby Belfast, Maine. In her book, she describes a packed dining room every night, 16-hour days, a crumbling marriage, and an unbridled dependence on prescription drugs. 
Erin's life collapsed, her business closed. She began to believe her life was not worth living. In my mind, it was like, I'm done, it's over. There's nothing to live for. Rehab, divorce, Erin lost custody of her son. Perfect, she was not. It almost feels to me as you're writing this book that you had to reach some absolute bottom and in its own way gave you a clean slate to literally start all over again. Yeah, and I realized that. It was like this beautiful thing that it took me a bit to, to figure out. I mean, even, even down to losing every single possession I ever had. Growing up in rural Maine, she says, helped make her a survivor. Aaron began serving meals out of an old Airstream, went to therapy, and found a way to forgive herself. I felt as though I were extending a hand toward the little girl I had left behind. I looked into her eyes and told her what no one else had, that she was perfect. For the little girl who grew up wanting to be so perfect, yeah. did you finally have to say, maybe not? Yeah, and that's okay. When you can do that, when you can forgive yourself, what does it give you? Strength. So much strength. That's what I felt, to say that you're okay. You're perfectly imperfect. In the ruin that was an old mill in her hometown of Freedom, Erin opened a new lost kitchen. She's built a community of women, a sisterhood of staff, and together they met the challenge of COVID with outdoor dining and started an online store. As chronicled in the show, The Lost Kitchen on Discovery Plus. There's another proof of struggle creates beauty and you need friction to give you strength. Aaron made us a ridiculously delicious spinach salad for lunch. I'm getting the dressing now. Yeah. A little sour, a little, a little, a little sweetness yeah. to it. Yeah, oh you get my a little God. bit of that vinegar there. <laughs> and we met her mom and new husband, Michael, who gives this story the extra bonus of happily ever after. Erin French is a life force, a magnet, and she hopes a mirror for others. I remember that feeling of just complete loneliness and complete despair of this was the end. And I wanted to give someone else, if, even if it was just one person who may have felt that feeling, a feeling so down and low that you were gonna end your life, that there's hope and there's possibility. Hmm. Oh my wow. gosh. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a story of resilience. Wow. This book, this book, wow. Uh, it's and like oh, food by the way, and therapy. right as for her son, she has regained uh, uh, Co custody, so there are a lot of a lot of boxes to check, and that's one of the really most important ones. First of all, you got to get Reese Witherspoon's got to option that book <laughs> yeah. for a production. That's what company. I said. And, and that's what I Aaron said. French that's in the film. Yeah. That, is, that is a movie. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
I joined Ellen on her set. What's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Just over four years ago, Harry Smith introduced us to a superstar of a college student named Jory Fleming. Back then, Jory, who has autism, was a 4.0 student at the University of South Carolina bound for Oxford after earning a prestigious Rhodes Scholarship. Harry's been keeping tabs on Jory since that first interview, even visiting him at Oxford. This morning in our Sunday Spotlight, Harry has the latest extraordinary chapter in the story. Jory Fleming has a lot on his mind. Congratulations, first. Thank you. Thank on your you. master's degree from Oxford. Yeah, yeah, they gave me the piece of paper, so that's irrevocable. <laughs> Good girl. The Rhodes Scholar is now a research associate at his alma mater, the University of South Carolina. He is also a person with autism. I think one of the hallmarks of my experience as an autistic individual has been maybe not a growing comfort level, but a growing desire to want to engage with others and learn from others. That engagement includes authoring a new book titled How to Be Human. What would it mean to think about autism? It's not just a list of pros and cons, right? And you stack them up and like one scale is bigger than the other, but rather as a difference in thinking. A difference in thinking, not a deficit. Jory's thought processes are based on images. And for Jory, translating images into language is no small task. It takes a ton of energy and it's, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know how to describe it other than energy, but it's, you can feel the drain internally. Fleming is at the control panel of his mind, channeling thoughts, marshalling resources to fit the task at hand. A difference he recognizes and appreciates. Maybe the difference between neurotypical and, and someone like myself is that it's just two dishes in the wider cuisine of humanity, you know. <laughs> we first met Jory during his senior year of college and then caught up with him at Oxford. Over the years, he's developed a manual of human interaction. So we've had conversations before. Do you have a little mm -hmm. manual on me? Yeah, I, uh, if I heard your voice, I would recognize it. I'd also probably recognize your ears or other kind of odd things that I tend to overfocus on. <laughs> So if I saw your ear in a mall, I might be able to say, hey, Harry. <laughs> Incredible. What is intuitive for Jory, the difference in people's ears, is all but imperceptible to the rest of us. There's something very special about how he sees the world. Fleming's mother, Kelly, with whom he still lives, homeschooled Jory and accompanied him to Oxford. The book is dedicated to her. She's not just my mom. She's been, well, she is my teacher, my care, and and my greatest friend. Fleming writes eloquently about coping with a world he says was not set up for him. I've never felt like I'm a mistake. People sometimes talk about wanting to cure autism. I am very appreciative of the difference in my mind and how it enables me to, to see problems, to see other people. I think if I wasn't autistic, I might I might actually be less empathetic. Something for us neurotypical types to think about. For Sunday Today, Harry Smith, Columbia, South Carolina. What a guy. Harry, thank you very much. Jory's new book, How to Be Human, An Autistic Man's Guide to Life, is out now, and it's available at today.com slash shop. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus for family dinners, family vacations, family anything, for traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. For breaking news in our changing world, 
download the NBC News app. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of violence and persecution in their home countries. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. In Philadelphia, there was dancing in the street as the Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium celebrated 25,000 shots in 31 days. In Virginia Beach, a vaxxed up senior living community celebrated their herd immunity by taking swings at a COVID-shaped pinata. We spent a few hours at City Field in Queens recently, chatting with vaccine givers and vaccine receivers. Even months in, it doesn't get old. What is it like to know that you're literally changing people's lives by being able to give them that shot. I feel honored the fact that I'm giving these vaccinations to the people, especially if it's just to keep them safe and just to keep them relieved. Relief after a year of fear and anxiety. The nurse, is, she's really good. She was talking to me. Before I get nervous, it's done. It was easy. It was, oh my God, it's done. Is there a sense of relief for you? Yes, yes. It's kind of like relief to me and my mom, my family. It's a big know. deal. It's a big deal, of course. It's impressive, the care and concern shown to everyone who files in. Each individual dose changing not just the life of the recipient, but the lives of all they contact. It's in, we're done. Thank you. Oh, I want to have the second dose right away. <laughs> does it get emotional for you sometimes? Yes, it does. It sure does. Sometimes you have to take a minute for yourself and calm yourself down too. Wow. To know that you're making a difference person by person by person by person, that's, that's got to be significant in some way. To me, it seems like. You can't really put it into words or express it, but it sure does. Oh, yeah, that takes so much. As the doses are administered, we dream. Who will we hug first? Who will we go see? For some, it's a no-brainer. I mean, I've been eager all week just to get it. I have a, a new grandson. Uh, he's two months old, and I just I, I want to be normal with him. You know, I want to be able to visit him as often as I, as I want without the worry of you know uh, uh, possibly spreading anything. These are the Pfizer vaccines. Nearby, in a seriously secure area, are the frozen vaccines, liquid gold, some call them. Dealing with these very sensitive vaccines, what would you liken it to? Transporting a nuclear missile. <laughs> Even more so, like a like a heart transplant. You, you're removing something that is quite alive, and then you're just moving it over to another life and giving it, giving that person life. It really is such a, a sense of pride and accomplishment to be able to be part of that. All this is happening on the mezzanine of a ballpark in Queens. I've been told on good authority that this private suite, which is now being used to store medical and sanitary supplies for the vaccination effort, actually belongs to Jerry Seinfeld. I got a bet he'd think it's being put to good use. And when the healthcare workers take a break, there's this. Yup, the Mets 1986 World Series trophy. A point of pride for the people of Queens, as is the effort here. Thousands and thousands of vaccinations administered without a hitch in English, Spanish, Chinese, and more. <laughs> No what does it mean to you personally as a Queens guy to be here and be part of this effort? Historic, you know, it's just in, immeasurable, honestly, to help my own people uh, of South Asian descent as well as my fellow Queens residents and help them get vaccinated and help getting back to going to Flushing Meadow Park, coming to a Mets ball game. It's a huge honor um, and it's just extremely humbling. That was so much easier than in my head. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. 
go ahead and go out there. The shots are more and more of. Hi, today all day. It's Thursday, and today Tops is here to bring you the best conversations from our show. We've also got an exclusive chat you definitely don't want to miss. But first up, Chanel brings us pop star. Miley Cyrus cover shares mega hit Believe to celebrate Pride Month. And Luke Bryan gets vulnerable in a documentary series about his life. Take a look. Now, what time, time for the best part out? of the day. What time is it out? Pop star. All right, let's Good rock. morning, everybody. All right, first up, Miley Cyrus, head of the Singers Pride concert special premiering tomorrow. Miley released a preview of her performance covering the 1998 chart-topping hit Believe by Cher. Up on a stage with a group of drag queen backup dancers, some even stars right off the runway of RuPaul's Drag Race. It's hard not to dance around to her take on this pop classic. Here's a peek. Big party there. You can catch the full show. Miley Cyrus presents Stand By You starting tomorrow on Peacock. I, I bet Sharon loves that version. Absolutely. Too, it's like a tribute. Yeah. Next up, Luke Bryan, the country music superstar, is the subject of a brand new docuseries. It's called Luke Bryan, My Dirt Road Diary. The show is set to tell the story of the ACM Entertainer of the Year just knockout career in country music and give an inside look at Bryan's personal life. Here's a look at the trailer. All of a sudden, Luke is the biggest act in country music. I learned a journey isn't only about you, but about everyone who has helped you along the way. Luke's been through a lot. You won't know it, but I do. With as much as we've been through as a family and as friends. I have uh, some angels in heaven making this night possible for me. There's mama. I remember me and Caroline sat in our house and I just started crying. All of this work, truly, it was all worth it. Uh, oh, that looks good. Mm -hmm. He's such a likable guy, too. The five-part series, Luke Bryan, My Dirt Road Diary, streaming, it starts streaming, and IMDb TV, August 6th. All right, next up, James Corden. This is funny. And Tom Brady. In just two weeks, Brady will team up once again with PGA golfer Phil Mickelson in the match celebrity golf game for charity. Now, ahead of that big match, Brady gave a preview of his golf game last night, hitting the links with the uh -oh. late night's James Corden. And following a quick musical warm-up, <laughs> the talk show host found himself in a little bit of trouble trying to keep up with the NFL's greatest of all time. Check it out. Super Bowl! Super Bowl! Seven rings! Seven rings! I'm the Ariana Grande of the NFL. I'm the Ariana Grande of the NFL. Let's play some golf. Let's... Oh, that's a beauty. That, that is better. an absolute beauty. <laughs> it was really funny. He got off the golf cart at the beginning, and James Corden said, I thought I looked like this, and when I close my eyes, I feel like I look like you. It was funny. It was cute. All right, so we'll have more of that. You can just go to YouTube. It's all over. There mm -hmm. you go. All right, guys. All right, looks good. Thanks, Chanel. Good one. Up next on Today Talks, Britney Spears appears in court. The third hour has all the details. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30... We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism.
Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our Across America journey here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Welcome back. Today on the third hour, Britney Spears speaks publicly in court. Craig has more. Now to that legal drama involving pop star Britney Spears. She spoke out in court on Wednesday in her fight to end that 13-year-long conservatorship, which her father oversees. Britney appeared remotely, telling the judge she is, quote, traumatized and that she wants her life back. NBC's Aaron McLaughlin is live again for us from Los Angeles. So, Aaron, uh, Brittany detailed what she says her life has been like under this conservatorship. Uh, I know that you were able to actually listen to, to Brittany, her voice, and, and you indicated earlier that she sounded uh, almost desperate. What were some of the biggest takeaways? Yeah, that's right, Craig. We actually weren't allowed to record the court proceeding itself, but I can tell you to hear her voice, her desperation, the anger and outrage, her voice at times shaking. She was speaking very quickly, asking for the court, pleading with the court to end this conservatorship, saying, I feel ganged up on, I feel bullied, and I feel left out and alone. I deserve to have the same rights as anybody does by having a child, a family, any of those things and more so I shouldn't be in a conservatorship if I can work and provide money and work for myself and pay other people it makes no sense mm. the not laws need to change now she also provided some intimate details about her treatment as well as her medical history saying that she at one point was put on lithium when she said she did not want to continue with a las vegas residency with one of her tours she also said that she was blocked from removing her iud or contraception mm. so that she could have another baby so really some disturbing details it is important to point out uh, that we do not know everything about this case. Much of it remains under court seal. As for the conservator's response, including her father, he did not speak out in court. Uh, we did hear from his lawyer saying that he was extremely sad to hear his daughter uh, speak in this way, uh, that he still loves her. You know, I know there's a lot of information that we don't see clearly because a lot of people are sitting here thinking, how can she, this one woman, finance, frankly, the salaries of so many people, and then yet she can't make decisions for herself? How soon can we expect the judge to make a decision here? Yeah, that's right. And legal experts I, I, I've been talking to say it is extremely unusual for Britney Spears to have been able to go on tour, to perform yeah. at the highest levels, yet remain under the control of a conservatorship. They say that's just simply extraordinary. As for the next steps, her lawyer has yet to petition for the conservatorship to be ended. Once that happens, there needs to be further legal proceedings. Right now, the next court date is July 14th. All right, Erin McLaughlin, uh, keep us posted. Know you well, thank you. It is time for She Made It with an entrepreneur on a mission to change how we see sunscreen. Today, lifestyle and commerce contributor Jill Martin has her story. Good morning to you. Hi guys, good morning. And her passion just comes right through the screen. Supergoop founder Holly Thaggard wants us to know wearing sunscreen is not just for summer, but for every single day. Her multi-million dollar brand was created 16 years ago and it all started from a product with a purpose. Take a look. You have to inspire people and, and build beautiful products so that people want to put it into their life every single day. There's no doubt Supergoop founder Holly Thaggard is the queen of sunscreen. Are you wearing a shirt that says sunscreen all over it? Wear sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> but before she was shaking things up in the world of SPF, Holly was a teacher and a professional harpist. What I find the most fascinating, you were in a totally different world. I was a third grade school teacher out of college and I still believe that I'm still teaching. You don't necessarily need to be in a classroom to be a teacher. 16 years ago, Holly was inspired to change what the world thought about sunscreen when a close friend of hers was diagnosed with skin cancer at the age of 29. 
Another good college friend of mine who's now a renowned dermatologist said to me, you know, Holly, it's really that little bit of incidental damage that you get every single day. Um, it's not about beaches and bikinis. Was that the first sort of aha moment that you were like, okay, we need to pay attention. Absolutely. There are not many cancers that are primarily preventable with a magic lotion. When I looked at the category though, the chemical formulas were itchy and irritating and sunscreen had a very negative reputation back in 16 years ago. I thought, gosh, if we want people to wear SPF every single day, there needed to be a product. And so I, I started to dream about SPF. Holly began meeting with chemists to create a formula that was both clean and free of harmful ingredients. So after bootstrapping her business, Supergoop was born in 2005. As a mother of two, her original business plan was to get sunscreen into classrooms, but discovered it wasn't that easy. I quickly learned that it's thought of as an over-the-counter drug. No one had advocated to carve a policy out that would allow SPF to be brought to school or available in the classroom. Undeterred, Holly pivoted her sunscreen brand to retail for selling in local stores until a buyer from Sephora's headquarters in San Francisco discovered her product. She called the number on the packaging, which was, of course, my cell phone. Right, you're like, call me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she said, you know, I don't think you're quite ready for Sephora, but I want to give you some tips and tricks and then keep in touch with me. And one of those was, you've got to get your press built up. And we spent two years building my press book. I dialed her back and I left her a voicemail that I was coming to San Francisco and I was ready to sit down and talk. She didn't call me back, but I flew out there with no meetings on the calendar. I was completely broke. And the first night I got there, my phone lit up. It said Sephora. And she said, I think you might be here. Um, can you come in and sit down and talk to us? The meeting was a success, and in 2011, Supergoop was on Sephora shelves all across the country, 365 days a year. So now you're a multi-multi-million dollar company. We are, and we've been, uh, we're going into our third year of profitability, which is so exciting for me because if you're not profitable, you're not sustainable. Today, Holly's original mission of providing SPF to young kids has come full circle. With their ounce-by-ounce -ounce giving program, Supergoop ships a free pump of sunscreen to classrooms across America. Do you feel like you've made enough of an impact or do you still feel like you have so much to change? Today, fast forward, I think it's because of our products, it's because of the fun and playful spirit of this brand that we've been able to change and actually create a new category. What's next for Supergoop? Oh gosh, Jill, more of the same. Game-changing SPF innovation that's never been done before is what wakes me up in the morning and helping others inspire a world in which they embrace this habit and embrace it as a family. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What changed that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Role. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. 
The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, we're Chugies no more, whatever that means. We're joining TikTok. All right, it's a big day around here. A big day. So if you want to know what goes on behind the scenes here, you're going to like this, I think. We're launching TikTok, and Jenna and I are ill-prepared, but it's big, yes. all right? There's an at Hoda and Jenna TikTok account. We are starting. We're so to, excited. And we're just learning. So don't judge us by our first attempt. We will do many no, more. We're going to do better. This yeah, is going to be great. Our, but we just are, practice. We're kind of excited because we are getting help from someone who went viral. Yeah. Country star Walker Hayes. He has a new song that we cannot stop singing. So oh. we are going to, and we say this lightly, attempt to dance to a song. Well, he does a great TikTok to his song. It's called Fancy Like, like and it is such download a it. cool, fun, fun song. Plus, we're going to find out the funny reason why Ken Jung hopped on a plane to the UK. I mean, we love it when he's here. He always makes us laugh. And 20 years after the original made our pulses race, the Fast and the Furious franchise is back. 20 years? Yeah. We're going to get a, he, a sneak peek of F nine from Vin Diesel and the crew. Okay, so it's official. We are joining uh, TikTok. So before we move on, in honor of our official TikTok launch, we got some advice. And these are famous TikTokers. They are already telling us like what we should do. They're trying to help us with our account. Here's creator Aaron Azar, aka Mrs. Mrs. Space, Space Cadet. Cadet. Tip about TikTok, be authentic. Really authentic. Talking about how my shorts ride up my crotch when I walk, million views. Number two, put your own spin on TikTok dances. Nobody cares if you can't dance. And tip number three, don't forget to show your outfits of the day. Good luck and have fun. Okay. Oh my gosh, Mrs. Space she Cadet. Made it feels so, so much wait. better. She said, don't try to do the dances right. Okay, so I don't know what well, we've been doing. Why have we been why practicing don't we just so hard? Do, we weren't practicing hard. We well, practiced kinda. for five we minutes. We kind of practiced. A little bit. Let me do it like that. Yeah, but you're right. We haven't pra practiced so Follow hard. Follow us, though. Come to our TikTok page at Hoda you and know Jenna. What? This morning was so funny because we walked into, I walked into Hoda's dressing room, <laughs> and she had, like, an ID just sprayed on the. License. Her driver's license. I said, probably you should. I mean, I, like, turned into my mom for a minute. I'm like, you should probably put your ID away. And, then, uh, uh, and I said, I just renewed my license. But in that particular picture of that, I just realized if you renew your license in New York and you don't go to the DMV, you just yes. do it online yeah. like you can do, you get the same picture that you had from like the 80s. <laughs> oh my God. It's going to be like the 80s picture for the rest of my life. I look, I've just, I, look, I've, I look like I've just gone to some... Like you've left a luncheon. <laughs> a fancy luncheon. But I you was saying, <laughs> would this woman ever have a TikTok account? Yeah. Well, you said I look just like your mama. Well, which made did. me feel good. I know my mom is beautiful. She's gorgeous, yeah. But yes, and you are too. And but then, yes, your but hair then, was short. But then you said, sir, I don't think they're going to want you on TikTok, <laughs> sir. <laughs> okay, I didn't say that. I said the TSA may not let you on your flight oh, if yeah. you don't look the same. Sir, sorry. You're, no. sorry you said No, you may sir. not get on the airplane. Sir. Okay. Um, All right. it, was a, it was a really, really emotional day for Britney Spears. I think a lot of people have been following this. She has been under something called a conservatorship, which means her dad makes all of her decisions for her. She, by the way, is about to turn 40. She's 39 yes, years old. she's my exact age. Isn't that crazy? So imagine this. So there was a time before where they, I guess, determined that she was not able to make decisions yes. for herself. Well, now we're fast forwarding 13 years since that time and she feels trapped, and she actually says she feels abused. For 13 years, by the way, she has had a television show, a Vegas residency. She has worked mm -hmm. hard for mm -hmm. 13 years, and yet she hasn't been able to make decisions for herself, like driving in the car with her boyfriend. She can't do that. She said her, her father, by the way, uh, is the one who has control over everything, and she said she actually is not even free to get married or have other children if she wants to yeah. because of the rules of this conservatorship. And she was, it was really heartbreaking uh, what she said. It was, no one was able to record it. Yeah. They forbade that, but she was, she did say a few things. And she said this, she said, I've lied and told the whole world I'm okay and I'm happy. It's a lie. I've been in denial. I've been in shock. I am traumatized. I can't sleep. I'm so angry. It's insane. And I'm depressed. I cry every day. All right, there's a new show. Yeah, okay, this is a new show. <laughs> that's going to make you laugh. 
Okay, it is called Sexy Beasts. By the way, I do think that's kind of a sexy little cat. This is a Wait, very what? That this is a very strange reality television show on Netflix. Yeah. Where basically the the show claims to take a look looks completely out of the equation by putting their singles in elaborate makeup and, and yeah, prosthetic heads <laughs> like, like this one. That's a mouse, I think. Okay. Dolphins, pandas. Okay, so mask. Think of the masked singer, Ken Jung. Yes, Beats. having a baby with love is blind. Yes, and then I want Ken. He's got us. I know he's he's standing by. Maybe he can watch this with us. Yes, but Ken. this is Ken. Are you with us? Uh huh. Okay. Ken. Can we pop him up just so we can see Ken for a second? Okay. Okay. Ken, we want to know. Watch this with us, please. Okay. okay. Take okay. a look. <laughs> I want to get married. I want to have babies. Before I'm like 26, do you have health insurance? Welcome to the strangest blind date ever. Hey, how you doing? How Damn. You doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Could you fall in love with someone based on personality alone? Would you count this as a weird experience for you? Cheers. Uh, so, I like your fin. <laughs> <laughs> so what if I pick you and I'm not what you expect underneath? I kissed this girl and I don't know what she looks like. Time has come. This is gonna be really tough for me. I can't choose both of you. I've made my decision. My sexy beast is... Ken! Okay, <laughs> give it to us, Ken. What do we think? Uh. Well, again, apparently I'll be a panelist on the Masked <laughs> Swinger, guys. Hello. <laughs> wow. Would you? Wow. Uh, what? I'm so I'm so shocked. I'm not hosting that. That's what I'm so shocked. <laughs> well, right you now. might be Ken. I mean, you know, the day's young. <laughs> There's still time. We we cannot wait to visit with Ken in a second. But uh, that that show, by the way, Ken, uh, Sexy Beasts drops on Netflix July the 21st. Yeah, so let's put it in our calendar. We're going to be back visiting with Ken in a second. He's got a lot of good projects. <laughs> oh my and his gosh. eyes look dry. Yeah, we'll Ken discuss it all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you know what? what? It's, uh, now, first of all, the mouse has to leave. Yeah. Because the goodbye. mouse is not invited here it's anymore. It's very distracting. Goodbye, mouse. Okay, but <laughs> thank you for covering it. Thank you. There we go. Oh. Okay, it is baseball season. Summer just reminds me of baseball. Mm. And the only thing better than watching an amazing moment in sports is watching it through the athlete's parents' okay. eyes. This was so cool. So this week at a Wander Franco's Major League Baseball debut. Okay, he's a new Tampa Bay Ray. So his dad was in the audience. Ugh. His dad was watching his son get up to bat at his first Major League game, and, and his son hit a home run. Take a look. You know what? That dad, you can you picture him playing catch with his son, yes. pitching him the ball, watching his son hit at seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, ten years old, and now look at this guy at a major uh, league. Don't game. you love that? It's like it's like watching when we watched Ali Raisman's parents in yes. the stands. Remember like, they used to move with her? <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Right. Today Talks continues after the break with an exclusive chat you can only see here on Today All Day. Stay with us. now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. 
Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. Welcome back to Today Talks and our exclusive content you can only see here on Today All Day. I mean, this is big. We joined TikTok, and that's a big deal, except for I think I messed mine up. I, I was wish trying you to, could see the behind the back? scenes of Hoda and how I, do I delete trying my... to get on TikTok. Okay. That itself could be a TikTok when you're oh, but, too, too old to be on TikTok and you don't even know how to log by in. By the way, there's something very mesmerizing about those short videos because people are so incredibly creative. Yes. They're funny. These are like, there are moms who are like trying to be trendy and cool and they're laughing at themselves. Yes. And it's just fun. Like, I, I know think I've never spent any time on TikTok, but the last hour we've been just scrolling. Well, Walker Hayes has a great song called Fancy Life. Yes. It is, um, it's a great song and we tried our TikTok dance to it. Ignore our TikTok dance but his song is really a that, and plus. that song is like the type that reminds you of <gasps> summer apple like beige, is there a yeah. song that reminds you there's this picture from high school where yeah. i'm wearing like a white tank top yeah. and jeans and like of course flip flops yeah yeah and i'm sitting on the back of somebody's truck in texas mm -hmm. i remember the night but yeah. more than that i remember like what music we were listening Wait. to Garth Brooks oh, yes. takes me back to summer Does in high it. school. What about you? You know what I was just thinking? It's so funny. There's a kid rock song about summer um, that is so fun. And I, I'm blanking on the name of it of right course now. Of I don't know. But it is such a fun, like, summertime. It's like you're, uh, summer. someone will remember something. <laughs> what is it? All summer long. All summer all long. All summer long. Yeah, all summer long. Thank you, Rope. All summer long. It's a great, great summer song. It reminds you of just not caring and having a cold uh, one in your hand and before. Doesn't Walker Hayes kind of Walker remind you Hayes, of that? I, by the way, he's really got it. He sure does. <laughs> he was. It was kind of embarrassing because we were dancing and didn't look that cool. And no. he is very he's handsome. He's cool. And he was like, it took me 30 minutes to learn the dance with my daughter, which we found. And he's got moves. You yes. know, some, by the way, let's just break it down. Some people have moves and some people don't. You know what? No matter a, how much we what practice. What was kind of a, a heartbreaker is that when we were doing it and I kind of felt like I had I moves, too. I look I over too. and I see Wilbert, who I love, and it was, was a professional <laughs> dancer. He was. He, he does my hair. I looked, he, he goes like this. <laughs> I thought I looked cute. He looked by the so way, embarrassed. Well, when we did see the video, we did realize that some of us don't have that thing. But I think the we thing like that dance, can help though. all of us who don't, yeah, who who love to dance, is if we all slowed down. People who dance slow, yeah, have a cool thing about them. Even if it's just like two little moves, they had. There's something about watching someone who's just like got it going on. I have a super on. cool friend named Althea, and yeah. she just says this to me: what? shoulders, shoulders. 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 Yeah, I. Because uh, it's all in the shoulders. <laughs> I still remember I was dancing at something when I was a kid, and I still remember that feeling of thinking that I was on top of the world oh. and then seeing faces around me that <laughs> showed that it wasn't quite as I appeared. I it remember in my head. being I remember, at the camp dance, and no uh, boy asked, no boy ever asked. You know what's so funny about that, that no boy ever asked? I was just reading something that reminded me of this. There was a kid who decided he was gonna make it his mission to dance when he was in junior high or, what, or high school. And he asked the first girl and she said no. And he asked the second girl and she said no. And most people would have stopped on two. He asked and asked and asked. And at the end of the day, all these kids were rimming the wall of the gym and he was dancing. And it just reminds you, <sighs> like somebody wants to dance with you. You have to withstand all the rest. And that's such a like life lesson yes, for that. Yes, it is. If You're you gonna ask find enough that person. people, someone will say, it's like when Haley walked up to a little girl and said, hold hands, and she said no. And she came back to me, she said, she said no. I said, well, ask somebody else. She went to a second person. I was like, please <sighs> say yes. And the girl was like, no. She said, no, mom. I go, that's okay. Maybe she doesn't want to hold hands today. Keep going. And I watched her go up to the third and the fourth girl first said no. And then she looked at Haley again and she put her hand out. Uh, and I watched Haley walk off and I was like. I don't know how we went to TikTok to this, but I feel very motivated. And that's it. That's going to do it. This is our episode of Today All Day. Thank you for watching and we'll see you for more. Because there's always <laughs> more tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>
everyone, I'm Natalie Morales and welcome to our today all day special where we are taking a look back at some of the high octane interviews I've done with the cast of the Fast and Furious. With the release of F9, the franchise's ninth installment, there is no better time to revisit my conversations with the film stars, including Vin Diesel, Dwayne Johnson, Paul Walker, Ludacris, Jordana Brewster, Michelle Rodriguez, and Tyrese Gibson. F9 is produced by Universal Pictures, which is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. I've had the pleasure of interviewing the cast at amazing locations over the years. In Rio for the release of Fast Five, in London for Furious Six, and at the Toretto House for Furious Seven, just after the death of Paul Walker, the group's co-star. And I even got to hang out with Vin Diesel in a helicopter. Over the next half hour, we're going to revisit those memorable moments as this year marks two decades worth of fast cars, thrilling heists, and most importantly, tales of family. First up, let's head to Rio, where I visited with the cast in 2011, before the release of Fast Five. Bon dia, você, as they say here. And as you know, these movies, the Fast, Fast and Furious franchise, have broken box office records, and they have a cult-like following. They're back. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. For those 10 seconds or less, I'm free. The cast. I'm down. The cars. The races. Crashes. The babes. The franchise speeding across Los Angeles. Miami, Tokyo, Mexico, and now Rio. Fast Five, it's faster, even more furious, and now going to the max, IMAX. Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, and the gang reunited once more, and they've got company. The men we're after are professional runners. They like speed and guaranteed to go down the hardest possible way, so make sure you've got your thunder wear on. We find them. We take them as a team and we bring them back. And above all else, we don't ever, ever let them get in the cars. And the cast of the Fast Five is Paul Walker, Vin Diesel, Jordana Brewster, Chris Ludacris Bridges, and Dwayne Johnson. Good morning to all you guys. Great to be here with you live in Rio. Thanks, feels good to be here. Good to be here. Now, Paul, you, you've said that this movie is, is a franchise that just never seems to end. Is it gonna yeah. keep going and going? I don't know, I think the fans are dictating that right now at this point, so, uh, you know, we're excited. The reaction to this one seems really strong, seems positive, and uh, that's all we want, so we'll there see you, what happens. There you go, and, and Vin, I know uh, for you, you've said that, that the fans really relate because this is a family of misfits. What do you mean? <laughs> Uh, just what just what that is. Uh, it's a it's a family brought together of people it, from the first movie. The whole idea was that Dom Toretto was the father figure of a family of misfits, mm -hmm. and in you some being ways, Dom. Dom Toretto, yeah. yeah. And in some ways, this movie Fast and Five uh, continues that concept, and so we have a very big family and family is a very big theme in this movie. It is. In fact, Jordana plays your sister yes. in this movie, not to give anything away, but the family is growing That's right. a little That's bit. Right. And, and Jordana, actually, you and I have a lot in common because you're half Brazilian, mm -hmm. your mother's Brazilian. You actually grew up here as a kid in Brazil as well. So and to be back here shooting in Rio, what was that like? It's amazing. I mean, I absolutely love Rio and I have a lot of family here. So it was a gift to be able to come home. And, um, you know, a lot of my heart's here. So it was a gift. It's, Did it's you a teach beautiful these guys place anything about Brazil? Brazilian culture, how to speak. I did, and you know, the food here is amazing. We've been out to um, a lot of the trash ideas here, and we've had caipirascas, caipirinhas, and, and, um, and uh, yeah, they've been enjoying themselves for sure. And, and Chris, of course, you're a world famous musician as well. You got a hot <laughs> song out right now, Break Your Heart with Tayo Cruz, album coming out this summer. So if you had to choose, you got acting, you got music. What do you pick? Standing here amongst all Standing these great here. actors, I would have to say uh, right now I, I would choose the acting, of course. But music is my number one love. But of course, oh, hey, being in a movie with these guys right here, I don't think anything can match that. So okay. I'm happy to be back. And I, you talked about breaking records. This one right here is going to break all the records that have been. <laughs> Trust me. Fast five. Trust yeah, me on absolutely. That. And, oh, and yeah. Dwayne, uh -huh. you are the new guy to the bunch, new to the family. Were there any hazing rituals involved? <laughs> 
No, there wasn't any hazing. <laughs> you know, these guys will try to haze for a Tough little bit. Love. You know, then, then it's, you know. <laughs> Who oh, wins? Let me guess. I gotta say, no, no, no. I gotta say, these guys were great. And you think about how epic the franchise has been over the course of 10 years and how difficult that is to just to sustain that type of success. These, uh, this group of actors has done an incredible job at delivering an incredible product over the past 10 years. So I was happy to come on board, help elevate this thing, create a character that's gonna be formidable. And, and chase these guys down, hunt these guys down, and bring their asses in. Sorry to cuss so early Ooh, in the morning. Wow, wow. <laughs> See, West Coast. <laughs> You're so big, buff, and strong. Should I keep going? And good looking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go. yeah. And humble. And humble. Sure. But I hear you actually had a hard time getting into those fast little cars. Is that well, true? I, I can appreciate those cars, but you know, it's a good thing, which is why I'm a, I'm a pickup man. Ford Tough, Bill Ford Tough, all the way. These guys. Uh, all of them, by the way, have the luxury of driving those super, uh, super cool, super, super cool, cool cars. Yeah. Jordana, you didn't even know how to drive when you started in the film. No, I didn't. How'd you get? To, you're like Miss Speed Racer. I'm a New Yorker, so I did. I didn't have my license yet, so I had to get it. And by now, I'm, I'm a little better. And, and yeah. then you've, you've produced. This is your second time producing uh, this film now. So, what's it? A little added pressure, producer plus the actor in the film. Continuing. Um, for me, it's an opportunity to really celebrate the entire process. Not a bad gig, right? Well, coming up, we're continuing our journey into our Fast and Furious vault by traveling to London for Furious 6. Stay with us. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky, in Cleveland. Our Across America journey reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Welcome back, and thanks for joining us as we look back on the Fast and Furious movies. Now, London was the perfect backdrop for my interview with this Furious 6 cast in 2013. Take a look. Oh. The Fast and the Furious. More than a decade of high energy action. Cars, cash, racing, rivalries. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Lighting up the big screen, smashing box office records. The first five films, raking in $1.5 billion worldwide. Hot rides, hot girls, hot locales. Now revving up for a sixth time. The Fast and the Furious fan favorites are all back. This time, this is London, baby. For their most high stakes adventure yet. And among the cast of Fast and Furious 6, we have with us, of course, returning Vin Diesel. We have Michelle Rodriguez also returning this time around. We have Tyrese Gibson, Paul Walker, Jordana Brewster, and Chris Ludacris Bridges. Great to have you all back. Thank you for having Welcome us. to London, which you guys know and love well, I hear, right? Yeah, absolutely. All the action took place here. We even brought your cars <laughs> to be here with you yes. today to make you feel right at home. Thank you. Vin, just when I think that you can't possibly top the success of what happened with five, here we go with number six. I've seen it, and the action is even better. So what are the expectations? I mean, how far can, the, can you go with this? 
I think we can go as far as the fans uh, demand us to keep making movies. Uh, we've been lucky that we've had such a strong fan base. They love the action, but they love our cast. Um, the action wouldn't be anything without the cast, wouldn't be anything without the performances and the dedication that the cast puts into making these action sequences seem real and feel real and add stakes to each of the action sequences. But ultimately, we keep doing it because because we, of the fans, the because people. of them, them, because of right. all of them. Yes, and they come every wherever you are, they show up. Exactly. Now I understand from the last one we saw you all take off, go your separate ways after a successful heist in Rio. Yeah. So now you start off in all the different parts of the world, That's but right. you come back together. And Tyrese, what brings you all back together? You know what? Um, you know, I think the family and the bond on and off camera. Um, you know, and it's, to be honest, when you're working on a movie of this magnitude, domestically and internationally, it's nothing like feeling like you're working on something that people are really anticipating. Mm -hmm. It makes you really think about the characters, it really thinks about the story and the next level. It's like, right. imagine Fast Five being the most successful one and then following it with six. I mean, we can't go backwards, we gotta go up. Right. It's a lot of pressure, but we deliver. You Speaking know of I mean? family, <laughs> the family's expanded a bit. You know, we see uh, Paul and Jordana, your characters, Brian and Mia, have a little baby That's this time right. around. So parenting like kind of changes things yeah. a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. How does it change, Paul? Um, for me, I feel like we've earned it. We've been doing this together for a long time. And, um, you know, I, I think that what we've all learned, earned together, I mean, it's it's not something that can be forced. You know, mm -hmm. I think that if you were to take each one of us individually and we were supposed to, and we just had this a basic encounter on the street, I don't think this would happen. Yeah. But we've been forced together more or less now for a long time. And as a result, cool things have happened. And I feel like uh, this was just the next evolution of it. It was baby time. That was just, that was it. And, and Michelle, we see, I mean, it, I don't think it's a surprise to any fans that your character comes back because we saw a <laughs> glimpse of you in five. That's right. Your character actually is still alive. Yes. I'm not going to give away any more, you know, <laughs> surprises here. But um, were, did you know when, when the plot lines were, were being written way back when that your character was going to come back? That's a funny thing, you know, because, you know, me and Vin have such a long-standing 13-year friendship uh, since, you know, on and off screen. And, you know, I found out about it by buying a ticket to go see it in Paris. Uh-huh. And then when I call really? him up, when I call up Vin, and I'm like, dude, what's up? Why is there a picture in on of me? <laughs> and when were you planning on telling me about this? He, you know, went on to tell me, well, well, I told you in four, two years ago, <laughs> that this was going to happen. So here we are. Excellent. I know the fans are excited about <laughs> that. And, and Chris, I mean, to be a part of this cast, amazing. But also to shoot in London, during the Olympics. I mean, did you guys get to take in and, and have some fun at the same time, Absolutely. go to some of the games? Yeah, I definitely attended some of the games. And like you said, you know, to be here with such a great cast, a great family, I just evolving and progressing every single film, and I'm just I'm just happy to learn, you know what I mean? But being here in London was great for me. I have a whole new appreciation for Europe. Such great memories from that interview. Now, still to come, a touching conversation with the Furious 7 cast after the death of their beloved co-star, Paul Walker. We'll be right back. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, oh. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day.
I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I can track this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're back with a look back at the Fast and Furious movies. In November of 2013, Paul Walker, who played Brian O'Connor in the films, died tragically in a car accident. The cast members, who consider themselves a family, sat down with me after his death at the Toretto House, which is a significant location in the film's storyline. As they processed their grief, they reflected on how they wanted to honor Walker through the release of Furious 7. I had to gather the family around the table because it just seems appropriate to be here at the Toretto House and in the backyard and this barbecue like you guys do in the film. And I can't believe how much you've already eaten. It's unbelievable how much she eats. I have to apologize. Yeah. I, I ate a lot of the beans. OK. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're prepped. We're ready. <laughs> Move away from her. We're outdoors. <laughs> Obviously, it's got to be a really difficult time to be doing the press tour and promoting a film at the same time. You're also dealing and talking about the loss of your friend. Paul yeah. Walker. Yeah. Yeah. How much does that weigh on you all? As much as we could find ourselves feeling like, man, well, isn't yeah. it selfish to be out promoting and trying to sell all of this energy about the movie when, when the obvious happened? But it's, it's that, that is the reason to do it because um, acting is art. And Paul is a part of this culture and our world and what we've all did together for all of these years. And we want the world to know that this is some beautiful art that he left us with. When I finally saw the movie, I, I breathed a huge sigh of relief because it is beautiful and he's so good in it. And yeah. the tribute to it is so fitting and beautiful. And I'm, I am really happy that the fans get to see that. No matter what conversations we had with him, it would always circle back around to how much he liked to give. And is his, you know, his humanitarian efforts and his philanthropic efforts and, you know, his reach out worldwide organization, no matter what, it would always come back to how he wanted to change the world. And he's still doing that. His brothers were so key in helping you to complete the film, James. Mm -hmm. Are they now part of this big family as well? You know, directing his brothers and, and, and directing um, them um, to, 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 to work with, you know, with everyone else here, mm -hmm. I think gave everyone here closure as well. And yeah. I think, you know, that, I think that was something that was very important for us. When we all clearly could see that Paul's brothers look exactly like him, and we got into how to move forward, and they were physically on the set with us every day, we actually felt like our brother was still with us. Dwayne, you came into the family a little bit later in Fast Five, and was it apparent to you right away that this was a bond that was gonna be forever? I had the privilege of coming into something that was already established and incredibly successful before I got there. Because we were all friends outside of the movie. Right, We'd right, see each other right. around, support each other's movies. We got the like same that. tattoo artist. We have the same yeah, tattoo artist, right? yes. <laughs> he has a picture of me on his lower back. Is that true? <laughs> I gotta see it. Yeah, Come on. Show us. <laughs> <laughs> we have such a great team. It's mm -hmm. not like other movies. When we come to work, we all want the movie to be mm -hmm. as special as possible. We all knew that it was our job to leave a legacy for someone we love and someone the world loved. And that's why the ending is as precious as it is. Hats off to you, James. Yeah. 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 Everyone, everyone, everyone. So much love there for their co-star, Paul Walker, and what a conversation we had, so emotional. Now that same year, I jumped into helicopter with Vin Diesel where he revealed to me the special inspiration behind his baby daughter's name. Justin, you didn't think you could get any better, huh? Here we go. With the latest film in the Furious franchise set for release next week, what better way to spend some time with Vin Diesel than up in the air, overlooking where it all started? 
see the Hollywood sign there, of course. <laughs> do you remember the first time you saw that sign when yes, you first I moved do. here? Yes, I do. What was uh, that like? It was 1990. Yeah. Um, I was looking at that Hollywood sign and so confident that I was going to be a big star. Yeah. And I felt like you know, this industry in this town hasn't seen anything like me since Clark Gable. And a year and a half later, I still didn't even have an agent. I had to go back to New York with my tail between my legs and go back to bouncing yeah. and ask friends to let me sleep on their couch. When did you find in yourself that you wanted to become an actor? At what point was that? I grew up in an artist housing yeah. in, in Manhattan. So I was exposed to actors and jazz musicians and painters and sculptors at a very early age. Miles Davis was recording in my basement. Wow, really? Yeah, it was a real... It's amazing. So I always wanted to be a performer. Now, 14 years into the Fast and Furious saga, he's a superstar. But with the death of his close friend and co-star Paul Walker, the making of Furious 7 was a struggle. How has Paul influenced your life? Not just, I mean, you talked about how much he is a brother to you. He taught you about fatherhood. He went into fatherhood a lot earlier than I did. That he took on that role of kind of being the guide into fatherhood for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of beautiful. The one thing Paul always wanted me to do yeah. was be present at, at um, you know, at my child's birth. I mean, he was so adamant about it. When I did Fast and Furious 5 and we were on the, the bridge in Puerto Rico and we're doing the end scene and Paul Walker and I come out of that car, her water broke in New York and my son was being born. He was like, we can film later. No, this is not a deal. You have to go now. And he was right and I did. How has fatherhood changed you? I don't know if it's because I have kids. I don't want to be a killer. <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't enjoy killer mode as much as I used to. And if I, I can't do it as often. It may be even less now. Earlier this week, Vin shared exclusively with us the name of his new baby girl. While I was in the delivery room, mm -hmm. I said that I felt like Paul was there. I named her Pauline. Pauline, that's awesome. Wow, it is so moving to see these interviews again. Now, fatherhood is such an important theme throughout the franchise, and I always enjoy sitting down with Vin. And recently, we spoke about F9, the latest installment to the franchise. So stay tuned right after the break. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Two decades, nine films, and six billion dollars later, the Fast and Furious crew is back, and they haven't lost a step. Well, that was new. You were just 
can I say, a baby back when this franchise started? We're talking like 20 years ago. The 20 year anniversary is when this film is being released. The Fast franchise has always entertained, but at its core, it's always been about family. I think of the legacy of this franchise as well. I mean, besides the fast cars, the unstoppable action, what else is it about this franchise that has such an enduring legacy? The question that I ask myself as I embark on the finale, Fast 10, and... and it is the last, the 10th? Wow. But I believe at the end of the day, people come to Fast because the characters, we want to know what happens next. We want to know how they evolve. But going back to that legacy. Going back to that the legacy. The family that you built. The family that we built. It's, it's not just on screen family. It's not just this, on screen. These people have been in your life throughout. I mean, that's ultimately what the true blessing is. Work with people that you love. And of course, this film, you clearly bring up Paul and his legacy throughout the film as well. He's never gone. Ever. He's never forgotten in this franchise. Ever, ever, ever. I never think I'm, I'm continuing the franchise in his absence. I always feel like I'm continuing the franchise in his honor. And as each installment one-ups itself with action and star power, John Cena plays Toretto's estranged brother in Fast 9, the universal appeal of Fast only grows. <laughs> Will you be my ride or die? Because we've got our own little VIP tram to go see you on your ride. Okay, yes. I mean, <laughs> guys, you want to do that? Ride or die! This one takes you to the jungles, it takes you to Tokyo, London, and outer space. I mean, it's crazy. Where else? I mean, where, where else, else could you go? go? <laughs> yeah. Back in time. Oh, there the you future. go. Back to the future. For Fast 9, after a year's delay, the future is now. Already grossing nearly $300 million overseas ahead of its U.S. release. It's so surreal to come full circle and to see something completed like that. I don't often reflect back enough on, on yeah. stuff that I've done. I always feel like um, I'm a minute away from having to produce the next film. And for Vin, who was already six months into pre-production on Fast 10, the hope is this movie brings audiences back to the theater. Is there pressure though, thinking that this is the movie that is hopefully gonna pack audiences and pack theaters once again? Last year, I might have been um, frustrated. Now I feel like we're here just in time to salvage that theatrical experience. Good it, luck and it, great success. Godspeed as always. Mi Very happy. See, I love it. Thank you. It's hard to believe these movies are still going strong after two decades. It has been a delight to sit down with Vin Diesel and the cast over all these years. And thank you for watching with us here on Today All Day. And I hope you enjoyed your fast and furious walk down memory lane. F9 is produced by Universal Pictures, which is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking, man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. ambush makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day?
all day. Oh, today all day. Looking for a hot and delicious date? <laughs> Who is it? Up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is taking you on a date with dates. And it'll be hard not to fall in love. First up, she's making the perfect sweet and salty snack, miso almond date bites. Then she's going to whip up a creamy date shake. And then to top it off, a French toast smothered in a gooey date caramel. I do get hangry sometimes, <laughs> shockingly. You would think, because I'm always cooking, I never get hangry. But you know what? It just happens to the best of us. I have been dating for a long time, and no, it's not what you're thinking. I have been eating dates, dates, for a long time. I grew up around them, especially during Ramadan when we would eat them to break our fast. And since then, I've been absolutely hooked and I hashtag cannot stop dating. I want you to be just as obsessed with dating as I am, so I'm gonna show you three of my favorite recipes. First up, we've got my miso almond date bites, which are salty and sweet. Then I'm gonna show you how to make my super simple vegan date shake. And finally, we're gonna make my favorite French toast with an almond butter date caramel. When you're shopping for dates, let me tell you something important. Make sure you're looking for the medjool variety. These are a lot sweeter and chewier than their other counterparts, which tend to be a bit drier and not as great to bake with, or cook with, or eat as a snack. I like to eat these plain as well, which is why I look for a nice, delicious, chewy, sweet medjool date, because you want something that's a nice, sweet snack, but you don't want anything that's dry. These miso almond crunch bites have everything going for them. They've got some umami from the miso, some crunch from the almonds. They're the perfect snack to keep in the fridge for when you want something a little sweet, but you still want to eat something wholesome. I'm putting in a solid amount because I love a date. These are going to act as a really nice base, a really sweet and chewy base. It's going to allow these bites to stick together, and we're not going to add any other sugar. That's way too many, but I don't care. So I got my dates in my blender, and now I'm gonna add my almonds. I'm using just raw almonds here. These are gonna add the nice crunch to these bites. We love a lot of texture here. Now, to seal the deal, to seal those almonds in, I'm gonna add a little bit of almond butter. You can feel free to use the peanut butter or cashew butter. If you have any other butter in your pantry, feel free to use it. The almonds and the almond butter make this snack super wholesome and delicious. Now, we're gonna add some shredded coconut. Make sure you use the unsweetened variety here because the dates are already gonna add a lot of sweetness to the snack. So pretty. We're gonna add a little vanilla extract, just for a little vanilla. And finally, I'm gonna add some white miso paste. This is made from fermented soybeans and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about miso soup. Stop that train of thought. Halt it right there. This is just gonna add some nice umami flavor and balance out that really nice sweet date and almond combination. Gonna finish this off with a little pinch of salt just to bring everything together. Pull out that sweetness. Little pinch, not too much. And then we're ready to blend. Are you ready? I'm ready. Feel free to scrape down the sides if you need to. I need to. just to get everything nicely incorporated. What you're looking for with this dough is to have some nice texture. So we don't need everything to be completely pulverized. Totally fine if we have some little bigger or smaller pieces of almonds. That's just gonna really contribute to the crunch. This is what we're looking for. As you can see, it's a bit thick, it's a bit sticky. This is gonna be great because it's gonna help us form it into our little bites. I wish you could smell this. It's like warm and salty and sweet, and I haven't even tasted it yet. Hmm, okay. I'm using a really cute cookie scoop here. We want it to be just shy of about a size of a golf ball, but you can make them bigger or smaller if you'd like. I like a little bite-sized bite I can just grab from the fridge when I want something a little sweet and salty. As you can see, this is what we're looking for. You can see a little piece of date here. You've got some different sizes of almond pieces. This is good. We like this. We like texture. It's a work of art. We love this bite. Look at how cute. First one done. My biggest struggle with no-bake recipes like this one is that it really is a challenge <laughs> to get everything to the parchment paper uh, before I eat it all. But I'm doing okay so far. I did sneak a little bite, though. Don't tell anyone. 
The dates make it really nice and sticky to form into a little ball as well, which is really great. They add a little sweetness. They allow it to adhere together. See, this is why I love dating. Look at that. Super cute. I always have this in my fridge or freezer because I'm always a little hungry. <laughs> I always like to snack, so this is really nice to know. I feel secure when I have this in my freezer or fridge. We're almost at the end. There's a light at the end of this blender tunnel. Pretty good. Just rolled out all of my dough into these cute little bites. And now I'm just gonna let them nap in the fridge for a little bit just to firm up while I melt my chocolate. Oh, would you look at that. My little date bites have woken up from their nap in the fridge and I think it's time to add some chocolate. I've melted my chocolate already, as you know. And now I'm just gonna do a really nice, cute drizzle. If you want a little more chocolate, if you want a little desserty vibe, feel free to completely submerge them. I'm just gonna do a nice little drizzle here. Look how smooth and melty that chocolate is. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna start drizzling. You don't need too much on your spoon. Go a little light-handed so you can get a nice, cute, delicate drizzle. Or you can go full force, do a really heavy drizzle. Whatever is up to you. The reason I like melting chocolate with coconut oil is that it makes the chocolate really smooth and nice, really drizzleable. Drizzleable. I just make up words, honestly, at this point. Got my own dictionary, drizzleable. Makes it easier to drizzle. Feeling like you want more of a chocolate moment, feel free to completely submerge. Take them for a swim. I will not judge you. In fact, I'll support you all the way. If you're getting fancy, you can even do a little crisscross action like this. I mean, come on. Picasso calls. He wants his date balls back. All right, last one. They look so cute. And now I have one final little step. Just gonna add a little flaky sea salt on top. It's gonna bring out that chocolate. It's gonna balance out the sweetness. I love using flaky sea salt over my entire life. You ready? A little. It also looks really pretty too. Those big chunks of flaked salt, so pretty, it's so fancy. These bites are gonna take another little nap in the fridge for about 30 minutes. I want this chocolate to firm up and then they'll be ready to eat. What a successful nap, I mean, Look at this, so pretty. You've got that nice chocolate drizzle, a little salty contrast. You know what? I should probably take a picture of them before I dig in, so I'm gonna do that. They look too cute not to. Just straight on the tray. Real life action, you know? I've gotta commend my own drizzling skills. I, I just have to have a moment for myself. Okay. I think I'm ready to taste. You know, I thought I was gonna plate them. I had this already, but I'm just gonna eat them straight from the tray because I can't wait. I just can't wait. Okay, here I go. Mmm. Look <laughs> at that little almond piece in there. So sweet. The dates, <laughs> simply in my teeth. The dates are so nicely sweet. The almonds add substance, a little crunch. That chocolate on top just seals everything together. And the salt brings all of the flavors out. And that miso, and gives this sort of savory undertone. There's a little salt, just trying to pick up the salt. No salt left behind, you know what I'm saying? Mm. These are so good. You guys have to try these. You guys have to try these. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Oh. Little crunch. It's the best tasting Yeah? Yeah, it is. Mm. 
So, have I convinced you to eat more dates yet? No? Okay, that's kind of crazy. Well, challenge accepted. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients for my irresistible date shake and show you how it's done. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. I joined Ellen on her set. What's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Not to brag or anything, but there are a lot of date farms in my home of Southern California. And with the date farms comes date shakes. I wanted to make a super creamy and delicious date shake, but without any of the dairy. But shh, don't tell anyone. They'll never know. Okay, I've gotta preface this recipe by telling you something. It is so easy to make, you'll never believe it. I'm just gonna add all of my ingredients into my blender, and it does all the work for me. I've got my dates here. They're pitted, don't leave any pits in there. That may not end well for you. Adding them straight into my blender. To make that super creamy milkshake vibe, I am using frozen bananas. This is a great way to rescue any of your ripe or nearly perished bananas that have just kind of been sitting on your counter for a while. Freeze them, make banana bread with them, make this date shake, super versatile. Also, when you're freezing your bananas, make sure to just cut them up into cute little slices like this. It'll make it a lot easier to blend. I like the nice little ice cream vibe that these bananas will give the state shake. Super good and flavorful. And the bananas add even more natural sweetness. In we go. A couple more things I'm adding. Some vanilla extract. And because I really want to feel hugged by this date shake, I'm going to add cinnamon because we all know cinnamon is like a hug in spice form. You know? Do you agree with me? I agree with me. Adding my cinnamon. Perfect. Now to blend everything together, I'm going to use some unsweetened almond milk. You can totally use another non-dairy milk option. An oat milk or a coconut would be really nice here as well. Adding my almond milk into my blender. Beautiful. Now all we do is blend. Wasn't that so easy? It's kind of crazy. I shouldn't have, but I did. Here we go. Prepare yourselves. I'm really excited. So I think we're done. Now all I'm going to do, pour it into my glass and enjoy. Hmm, okay. I mean, look how creamy that is. <gasps> that was it. That was our recipe. I need to send a picture to my parents. They're still in Southern California. They'll be really jealous. Okay.
Okay, perfect. Now I get to drink it. So thick. It's too good. It's crazy that this is a plant-based milkshake. It's so creamy. It's so velvety, but there's no milk in it. We love a vegan date shake vibe. So good. Mmm. Cute. So good. I could eat this forever. Eat it, drink it. I could drink it forever. My final recipe that really celebrates the magic of dates is an almond butter date caramel that you will want to put over your entire life, but we're just gonna put it on some French toast. I'm gonna go clean my blender and get the ingredients. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. I joined Ellen on her set, what's been a difficult year for her personally and for her show. Very few people go through such huge public humiliation. How can I be an example of strength and perseverance if I give up and run away? Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Orlando, Kentucky. Cleveland. Reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. In college at Berkeley, whenever I went to breakfast with my friends, they would always go for the eggs benedict, the veggie omelets, but for me, I only had eyes for the French toast. There was a restaurant pretty close to campus called La Note that had one of the best French toasts I've ever had. It had a really nice and sweet, crisp exterior, and I knew I wanted to replicate something just like that in my own kitchen, but with a twist. So, inspired by the French toast of my dreams, we are gonna be making a French toast with an almond butter date caramel. We're gonna start by making an almond butter date caramel that is so luscious you will wanna drown your entire life in it. But today we're just gonna put it on some French toast. Let's start. Added some dates in my blender. We're gonna add a little bit of almond butter. The almond butter is gonna balance out the sweetness of the dates really nicely. To sweeten this up a little further and to add a little bit more of that caramel undertone, we're gonna add some coconut sugar. To make a super luscious and velvety caramel, we're gonna add some vanilla almond milk. I'm using vanilla here, but if you don't have a vanilla, if you just have an unsweetened, you can add a little touch of vanilla extract. My blender is truly my kitchen BFF, so now all we're gonna do is blend it right up. Caramel will await us on the other end of this. Okay, I think we're looking good. Look at how luscious that is. 
And of course, a traditional caramel is made by heating sugar up on a stove, but this is my version of a caramel that uses dates. Now you can see why I want to put this over my entire life. Our almond butter date caramel is ready. All it needs now is some French toast, so I'm gonna go grab the ingredients to make it. Our Across America journey here in Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Cleveland, reporting on an America rebuilding after the pandemic. How narrow of a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. to make our French toast. I've got all of the usual suspects here. My eggs, my cinnamon, my vanilla extract, and I also have some milk. I'm using almond milk here, but you can use your favorite. I'm gonna crack two of my eggs into my beautiful little pie dish here. Cute. Perfect. I'm gonna whisk my eggs together until you don't see any separation between the yolks and the white. I'm really putting my entire body into this. <laughs> Whisking eggs, morning workout, perfect. French toast, workout of your day, okay. I'm on board. Okay. This looks nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna add some of my almond milk. Vanilla extract. Vanilla extract for me is a must when I'm making French toast. I just love that little extra sweetness, that little essence, it really brings it to life little pinch of cinnamon now. We want this to be super smooth, super uniform. It's gonna be a nice little bath for our slices of bread. Okay. I'm gonna add a little coconut oil to my pan, let it melt, and then that's gonna be perfect for me to fry the bread in. Time to dredge our slices of bread in my little mixture here. I'm using sourdough bread here because I love that tangy taste. It's my favorite kind of bread. We're gonna let the bread really soak up that egg mixture. And by the way, French toast is a great use for your stale bread. So if you got any stale bread in your pantry, it's time to make some French toast. I'm gonna flip this over. Make sure it really soaks up all of that goodness. It smells really good already. I know it's crazy because we haven't even cooked it. One last step before I cook my French toast. I'm gonna add a little sprinkle of coconut sugar on both sides because I want that really sweet crispness on the exterior.
Look at that. It's gonna get some nice color as well. Now we're going straight to my pan. Hmm. You know what? No, I'm adding a little extra sugar on top. So we want to cook these until they're nice and cooked through, golden brown on both sides, about three to five minutes per side. This is a great brunch recipe, a great breakfast recipe, and honestly, a great dinner recipe too. Like, who are we kidding? We can have French toast for dinner. There are no rules. I like pan frying these in coconut oil as well because I think it plays really nicely with that coconut sugar. All right, we are going to flip. You know, I consider myself a patient person, but then when I'm cooking French toast, I'm like, hurry up. Can't wait all day. It's not even that long. I don't know why I'm being so dramatic. Just gonna flip my second piece. Look at that color. Looking so golden. Ready for a photo, ready for some caramel, some date caramel. All right, these are looking beautiful. I'm gonna transfer them to my plate. So I'm hungry. Do we think they're ready for their caramel? I think they're ready. All right. It's thick, it's luscious. I'm gonna be generous here. Nothing wrong with a little thick drizzle. Gonna dip in for some more. I really just went for it. <laughs> I was trying to be delicate before and now I'm just straight up going for it. I like having a little pool of caramel on the side. It looks really delicious. I'm gonna add some berries just to sidle up next to that date caramel, sit on top of it. They kind of stick nicely onto that caramel too. <laughs> a little powdered sugar. You can't tell me you don't want this. You just can't tell me you don't want it. It looks so pretty. I think my note would be proud. I should probably send them a picture. Maybe I'll slide into their DMs. <laughs> oh, it looks so pretty. The almond butter caramel, while delicious, it is a brown color and so is bread. So by adding pops of color like these berries, that powdered sugar, just really brings all of those colors and flavors to life. I'm going in. I'm immediately overwhelmed, so I don't know where to go. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. We're going for it. Gonna get a nice little crust. Add a berry. Okay, bon appetit. It's, I need a minute. That date caramel is like the best sub for a maple syrup. It's so much more flavorful, more complex. Those dates and the coconut sugar create this really nice, marriage of sweetness. I love using sourdough here too because it's sour, it's kind of tart. Because it's so fermented, it goes so well with the sweetness of the caramel. The berries really make everything pop. I mean, I'm not trying to have like a French toast off with La Note, but I don't know. I think I might, I think I might. And don't get me wrong, I love maple syrup. Sometimes we like switching it up. I love snacking on dates. They're my favorite thing ever. But this almond butter date caramel really shows how many things dates can do. We just love to date dates. They can do it all. We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino, and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m.
Uh, looking forward to this one this morning. We're joined by two Saturday Night Live veterans. Fred Armisen, been wake, making us laugh for decades since he much. first broke out back in 2002. And current star Beck Bennett, back for his eighth season on SNL. Well, now they are teaming up away from 30 Rock in the new animated movie The Mitchells vs. The Machines. They play, naturally, two malfunctioning robots who try to help the Mitchell family save the world from a robot apocalypse. Brother, we should go. No, I order you to stop. Okay. Uh, we are just stopping because we chose to. No, we're not. We are humans. We are. For example, we consume food in the traditional human manner. Observe. Yum, yum, good. Yum, yum, good. See? No, actually, we are robots. Let us go downstairs and find the humans who you cannot give orders to. <laughs> I say the same thing to my son. Yum, yum, good. Yum, yum, good. Uh, Beck and Fred, good morning. It's so nice to have you with us. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here. Well, I, I think I, I teed up the premise of this show pretty well. But Fred, can you dive in a little bit more and tell us what this movie's about? Um, it's about a robot apocalypse where uh, they take over the world. But there's one there's one family left over to fight them. And uh, they uh, utilize these two robots to help them um, survive. So, so Beck, I know you uh, I've been you're currently with SNL. Fred, you've been it's basically one of the most collaborative shows on TV, both behind the scenes and ahead of it. But yet you you have to record your scenes and your lines separately. W was that tough for you, Beck? Oh yeah, for this uh, for this movie, um, it wasn't tough because I just have so much fun by myself. I get in <laughs> around and I'm free to be myself. You know, Fred's not there holding me back. I can just go. <laughs> Fred, what really was it like? What about do you do you feel that same individuality? Um, I didn't realize that he was going to be in the movie. I, I just thought it was going to be me. I thought it was a solo thing. So then you, Oh, so you thought it was just going to be you doing the robots. And then, and then I was in the movie. Yeah. Doing, doing yes. Robot. I found out just now, <laughs> just now. <laughs> yes. Just so, but you knew we were going to be doing this together. What, what did you think was, why did you think I was coming on here? I thought it was your birthday. <laughs> I thought it was like a birthday greeting. Oh my God. That is so sweet, Fred. Thank you. But no, <laughs> So, no. hey, hey, guys, uh, uh, one of your 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 hosts coming up is uh, is in the news. E e is in the news. Elon Musk is going to be hosting SNL, and there's been, you know, there's been some controversy about that. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll spare you any problems, Beck. I'll ask Fred since he's not on the show now. What do you think yes. about that, Fred? Oh, I think it's great. Um, it's going to be fun and entertaining, and uh, I always like the surprise of. Uh, the hosts at SNL, if it's um, sports figures or, or whoever, it, it, it's always, you know, it always delivers on that. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. Mm -hmm. Beck, do you think when new people come in, you know, to guest host the show, are, are they nervous to do it? Are they looking for advice? Are they looking for ways to, for you guys to make them feel more comfortable? Yeah, I mean, I think that's all they're looking for because it's so... <laughs> It's all last minute, and the show comes together really on Wednesday night. You have to, after the table read, you pick the show. So um, I think they're a little it, it like the show gets so much better every day. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think they're definitely looking for us to be like, relax, it's fine, we got you. Just follow <laughs> our lead and read the cue cards, and yeah, absolutely, we are one hundred percent there to put them at ease. They should do whatever we say. <laughs> They're, in our, they're, they're like clay in our hands. Okay. It's great. Are, are you hoping to get a free Tesla out of the deal? Absolutely, 100%. Thank you for asking. Uh, sometimes <laughs> the hosts give guests to the cast, and I would love for Mr. Musk to, you know, impress us all, not only impress the cast, but impress the world with his generosity. <laughs> Maybe you can get on the next space flight to, to outer space. I, yes. A ticket on <laughs> space flight. And his Tesla, whatever he's got would be great. <laughs> I will take whatever he has. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. It, it, we could have just let, teed you up and let you guys talk to each other the whole time. Thank you. Isn't that what we did? You're welcome. Well, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Pretty much. <All> right. <laughs> uh, the, guys, good to see you. 
It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know, I know. It's been a little confusing. Like, really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Actress and comedian Melissa Villasenor broke barriers when she became the first ever Latina cast on Saturday Night Live. And now audiences cannot get enough on her. You know her because of her crazy impressions. Everybody from Dolly to Lady Gaga to John Mulaney. She's got them all. She can do it all. Yeah. Thursday night you'll find Melissa bringing the laughs all night long as host of the Film Independent Spirit Awards. And here she is to tell us all about it. Hey, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hold up, Jenna. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Girl, Thank you for getting up. We early. love that you're rise and shine on the West Coast. And we were just looking back in our vault, and we realized that you actually auditioned for Saturday Night Live when you were just a babe, 21 years old, and that was back in 2009. You didn't get the gig until 2016. Did you think that would be one of those elusive things, like I always wanted SNL but didn't know if I'd ever get it? Oh, yeah. I felt like after I didn't get it, I was like, well, got to go find something else then. And I think I was, I was, I think I wanted to study geology and rocks and I don't know where, what I was doing. And then I got into clay figurines. But then I, I always knew I had to be on stage. I had to make people laugh. So I just got back on, you know, doing stand up and it unfolded in a beautiful way. Yeah, mm. you kept at yeah. it, which I think is so awesome. And we have to say, we are obsessed with your Dolly Parton. Obsessed. Obsessed. Oh. We're obsessed with her. Oh. Well, good morning. It's a really beautiful day. <laughs> I love her, too. She's so positive and uplifting. I got obsessed with her audiobook, Dream More, when I was in quarantine alone. And uh, she just became like a best friend listening to her. She's just, well, I from the smoky mountains and I'll and then she always would still tell stories of like you know we didn't have toys growing up we played with mud and that was so much fun by the way so right. oh my, wait, when you were a little kid were you always impersonating like your aunts and uncles and all that I think so I was very shy and then it wasn't until uh, I was like 12, 13 years old. I realized I could do impressions and singing impressions because um, I, I was very shy up until then. But once I found out that gift, I was like, well, now I, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was just special. And yeah. You yeah. know, it, it, you're bringing your talent to the Independent Spirit Awards, which has been hosted by all of these comedians. Yes. In years past. No. And here it's, you come. It, Are you excited? Oh, I'm so excited. It's going to be great. I, we've taped most of it, and um, it's cool. that I, I love the segments I did, the skate scenes and characters, and I can't wait for people to see it. It's an honor to host it. Are you going to be singing? Actually, yes. There's a song in there. Oh, we yeah. can't wait to hear what that is. All right. We want to play a game with you. We're going to call it Impressions Confessions. Confessions. We're going to ask you some rapid-fire questions, and then you have to tell us what 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 it was all right okay so. first one ready right. first impression you ever did britney spears oh baby oh yeah <laughs> sometimes i run it was britney <laughs> <I love> it. 
<laughs> All right, impression that's guaranteed to get a laugh. Owen Wilson. Every show, if I just say, you guys like my Owen, and they're like, yeah. So, yeah, they love Owen, yeah. They, I, it's just, I bring a lot of calmness to the crowd. <laughs> they like the Owen. Yeah, wow. Uh, Oh my God, that's so good. Love okay, it. impression that you're working on, but it hasn't made it to air yet. Oh, I have a Lily Tomlin. <laughs> uh, now I, I feel like so overwhelmed. I left my bag at the beach, and oh, I lost the sandwich. I, I was so hungry. Let's that one. <laughs> right, <our> last <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> First impression where you actually heard back from the celebrity who you were doing. Anna Navarro, okay? I've done her a few times on a view sketch, and she tweeted a message to me. She's like, honey, you can impersonate me anytime you want. I love it. It makes me laugh. See, this is what we love. Latinas, we love laughing at things. <laughs> this is voice, you know? Well, we, Melissa, you thank you awesome. so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. That was fun. Thank Come you. back and make yeah. us laugh. Mm -hmm. We are back at 835 with one of the funniest ladies we know, Maya Rudolph. She's got a new animated comedy coming out, and I can't even believe that you got to sit down with her and not the way we, we've been sitting down I with know. people on Zoom. In it was so funny because we saw each other, and then we were like, we really didn't know how to act. It was one of my first in-person <laughs> interviews of the pandemic. We met up here in New York. We had a socially distant chat about Maya's new Netflix project, her epic return to SNL as host, and what she learned while quarantining with her family. Maya, I think this might be my first in-person interview in more than a year. It's definitely mine. I feel I don't know how to act. I know. I know. <laughs> One thing that hasn't changed is Maya Rudolph's ability to make us laugh. That's the law. Mom law, as I am the sheriff. <laughs> and in her latest role for Netflix animated comedy, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, she does just that as the voice of a mom that saves the world from a technological revolution, along with her dysfunctional but loving family. The Posies are on vacation right now, and look how happy they are. It's a nice, messy, sweet, loving family in the middle of <laughs> saving the world. Machines taking over. Sure. Which could happen. Your Roomba could come alive and get you. I would not be surprised if I woke up in the middle of the night and it was just staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolph knows a thing or two about managing family mayhem, especially after the past year. Did you enjoy all the time at home? With all, you've got, you've got I your actually partner, have... your four kids, everybody's under the same roof. Yeah, I actually, and three dogs. I, I genuinely am I'm still enjoying it. She also joined the quarantine bread train. I did make sourdough bread. Is that a new skill? I mean, yes. It does feel like one of the harder breads you could have tried. It's exhausting. <laughs> it's really hard. Something else she picked up this past year, a couple of Emmys, including one for her guest appearance on SNL playing Vice President Kamala Harris. That's right, the senator from California is present. I watched a lot of people at the show playing the president or the vice president and all the political characters, and there really wasn't anybody that resembled me, and I wasn't really part of that, but it's such a legacy and such a rite of passage, particularly at that show as well. What does it take to nail Kamala? It's the wig. <laughs> it's a great blazer. And then I started to get, um, you know, maybe just a little bit of like the way she talks in the back of her throat, but what I notice about her is she's so smiley. Mm. After leaving the SNL cast in 2007, Rudolph recently returned to Studio 8H, this time as host, reprising some of her most beloved and famous roles. Now I feel you. I, I still can't tell if this is beneath me. <laughs> How good did it feel to step into Beyonce's wig? One more time. You, it felt time. so good. I always like in playing her to when a little girl dresses up as their favorite princess. It's like a crown that was waiting for you to put it back on your head. I mean, head. It, was, it was a dream come true. Beyond SNL, her part in the 2011 comedy Bridesmaids may be her most recognizable. The iconic Bye. film celebrating its 10th right. anniversary this Two. year. Why can't you just be happy for me and then go home and talk behind my back later like a normal person? Could you have ever guessed what a cultural moment that movie would be? No. We were having so much fun when we made it, and we knew it was funny, but we were just enjoying it. We weren't planning for a blockbuster sort of takeover thing, but 
The fact that it's been 10 years is kind of crazy. Well, I'm sure you've been asked this a thousand times. Everybody wants another one. I know. But I think the director said no. I know. Listen, if they want to do it, they know I'm, I mean, <laughs> I told you, anybody, anybody that knows me well, if they want me, I'm like, I'll be there. <laughs> it would be kind of funny, though, if we did it when we we're all super old. I'm here for that. I'm here for that. I would revisit that. That would be called the old folks home. <laughs> I've still got a, a bounce in my step, so maybe, you know, give it a good, like, 40 more years. <laughs> Years. Maya what? is the best. What? She's just a, a cool yeah. chick. Yeah, you want to be friends with her after I do. watching I that. Do. I do want to be friends with her. Maya. I, <laughs> I want think to you be are. friends with you. Yeah, yeah. you Will you be my so. friend? Yeah, she's so cool. Oh. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now, it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What changed that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Killer Role, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're back. It is 841. We're back with one of our favorites, actor and comedian Kenan Thompson. Yeah, he's on our TV every weekend, of course, for Saturday Night Live. In fact, he's SNL's longest running cast member. He's currently in his 18th season. Well, now he's also moving to weekdays starting and starring in his very own show. It's got a good title. It's called <laughs> Keenan. He plays a popular morning show host and widowed father raising two young girls with the help of a father-in-law who's just moved in with the family. That's sitcom magic. Check it out. <laughs> what, what was that noise you just made? You're gonna wake up the girls. You're the one yelling. What are you even doing up? Well, I thought we had a break in. And what were you gonna do, give him the funk? No, I was gonna hit him in the face and then say, sax to be you. <laughs> Kanan, good morning. We are so excited for to you. To be so, you. So uh, happy you. for you. Like to be, have a network sitcom mm -hmm. with just one name, yours, Kenan. I mean, that's just gotta be like right up here on the old goals list. I mean, it's, it's the pinnacle as far as, you know, my comedy career is concerned, like that's as high as you can get. Sitcom with your name on it, like that's it, basically. So I'm very excited. So you and Lorne Michaels are co-EPs together. Do you feel like pressure in this moment? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks for yeah, bringing I mean, it up. Me, me Lorne, Jackie Clark, who I created it with, David Casp, and uh, Ken Whittingham, our director, we're all EPing together. and. Everybody's kind of building this thing together, which makes me feel good. You know, it makes me feel like, number one, I'm not crazy. And <laughs> number two, everybody kind of wants to get behind this thing. So I'm, I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. The well, clips look great. The response has been pretty strong. So 
you know, I can't wait for tonight. Yeah, and, you know, for folks who may not know, you've, you've got two kids of your own. You, you and your wife have been married 10 years. How, how much did you draw on your own experiences as a father for this? Um, when we were writing, it was kind of only in, you know, mirroring my life a little bit. The fact that I do have two daughters and, uh, you know, everything else is kind of creative liberty, if you will. Like my relationship with my father-in-law was actually really wonderful. <laughs> um, and my wife is, you know, thank God she's still with me. So, um, everything else is, you know, we're trying to make a show that we, I haven't seen before, but. Whenever I'm doing, like, cooking scenes or, like, packing up, you know, homework and book bag scenes and stuff like that, it hits very close to home. <laughs> uh -huh. I bet. Hits close to home to us, too, because mm -hmm. you're playing a morning show host. And, of mm -hmm. course, Keenan, we know of your wonderful rendition of our very own Al Roker. <laughs> <laughs> Did you draw on that for inspiration? Well, definitely the energy that you guys have to put into everything early, early in the morning, <laughs> regardless of how tired you are or anything else or trying to keep your life going around it. You know, Al Roker is my brother. I love him to death. He's <laughs> such a brilliant guy and the nicest. There he is. Oh. Just the, the nicest hey, glasses Kenan. in the world. How are you? Best glasses game in the world. <laughs> I'm great, man. How are you? Good to see you. Good. Good. Con Congratulations on the new show. That's fantastic. Man, thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You, you got to watch and it. And if you need and somebody to play your dad, I'm available. <laughs> oh, that's good casting right, right there. Keep that in mind. Yeah, Roker's a Broadway veteran. Yeah. Why not? Oh, yeah. He'd be great yeah. at it. Hey, get before, the Roke dog in there. Get the Roke dog in there. Hey, Kenny, before we let you get out of here, they're remaking and rebooting everything. And a lot of it's not good. But Keenan and Kel, that was like one of my go-tos back in the day on Nickelodeon. Any chance that you bring back Keenan and Kel? I mean, there's always a chance, I would think, right? Okay. I wanted to see <laughs> so of the Fresh Prince when they brought it back. But, you know, it was just a gathering, which is fine. But I really wanted an episode. So if we do do it, we have to definitely do an episode. All right. right. Cool. Keenan, thank you. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Bobby Moynihan knows a thing or two about making people laugh, uh, originating fan favorite characters like <laughs> Drunk Uncle while he was an SNL cast member I mean, just for nine seasons. That. We just like to watch his face. We just want to face. watch Drunk Uncle. Yeah. Well, now Bobby is at it again joining the NBC comedy Mr. Mayor. He plays the communications director for the new mayor played by Ted Danson and he isn't so great at communicating. Take a look. Jaden, I, I found the mayor's little bus speech real original. It actually wasn't. To save time, I just took his last speech and changed algae bloom to bus passengers. I was being sarcastic. Well, you're great at it. Yeah, Jaden, Twitter has started to notice that we're recycling speeches. Small businesses are the lifeblood of this city. Reasonably priced produce is the lifeblood of this city. The passing of Archbishop Sheehan is the lifeblood. You're killing me. Yeah, the comms department may be stretched a little thin. Why, thank you. <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> all right, Bobby, first of all, thank you. We, we, Jen and I were just saying we wanted to laugh, and we're like, thank God Bobby Moynihan is on with us today. No, How, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, 
we, we're going to get to your show in just a minute, but we can't help but talk for a second about SNL. Yes. Um, you were there for 193 episodes because we counted. Um, <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> what if you were I to think boil it? 192, down. actually, you might be one off. Oh, really? <laughs> we like to give you extra credit. Okay. So tell us. Yeah, um, thank when, you. I appreciate it. When you reflect on that, like, are, what's like the highlight of of that of that time in your career? Oh gosh, how long do you have? Um, you no, I mean it was uh, it was the greatest time of my life. Uh, I have so many different memories, and they change every week. Uh, seeing this back makes me laugh because I'm like, oh, look at that child, look at that boy filled with hope. <laughs> it's uh, oh that, and that I mean that's the that's craziest picture of all time. I mean, but... yeah, that's uh, that's 15 year old Bobby right there. That makes no sense. To why me. did they hoist you like that? Yeah. Do you remember? That was, uh, I had robbed the place. Uh, no, that was, um, I, uh, that was, uh, uh, my last episode. Oh. Yeah, they carried me off stage after my last episode. I mean, to have Tom Hanks carry you off stage, and, uh, yeah. that's a good Yeah, one very strong out. man. Can you believe it? Uh, <laughs> Keenan's back there helping. <laughs> when people stop you on the streets, what do they ask for? Who do they, what characters do they want you to bring back? Um, I, uh, when I was on the streets, <laughs> when I was uh, living on the streets, no, um, <laughs> uh, it, it was usually, yeah, usually drunk uncle, uh, actually probably Snooky for a long time. Oh. It, was, it was Snooky for longer than it should have been. <laughs> um, so you're in this new uh, comedy, Mr. Mayor. We, yeah. we needed you back on TV. We, we missed you. Mm -hmm. um, well, and I, thank you. I, Me too. Hold on. <laughs> you missed yourself. <laughs> when I was looking at this, I said, I wonder if this is going to be like kind of politics funny but it's just funny funny yeah. it's like workplace funny yeah it's 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 a show about people who are trying to do good things uh written by people who are trying to do good things uh it's uh it's an absolute treat. Uh, I, watching that clip back, I can't believe I'm sitting next to Holly Hunter and 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 this lucky. I feel like I, I won a second television lottery with this show. It's uh it's amazing. Mike and Vela right there, they're absolutely fantastic. The whole cast is amazing. I love it. Well, you play a communications director, as we mentioned, who's not that great at communicating. So we wanted to put you to the test okay. to see what you've learned. So as communications director, how would you spin? these following situations. Okay, Bobby? Okay, this is how G how Jaden would do it. Okay, yeah. good. My character, Jaden, because I, right. I wouldn't know what I was doing. <laughs> okay, so here's what Jaden would say. Your boss's personal emails get leaked, and there's a photo of him in the buff. How do you spin it? Okay, you Photoshop a little bit more to make yourself a little bit stronger or something like an alien in the background, so that way you spin it. That way if you're like, there's an alien in the background. Like like <laughs> That's that. what Jaden would do. All right, how about this? Because your, he wants aliens to be real. Real quick, your boss's phone gets hacked. A video comes out about him hating the home team, the L.A. Dodgers, Ooh. and rooting for the rival Mets, the New York Mets. How do you spin that? Um, mind control. Mind? It was mind control. <laughs> yeah, it was you were under a mind control spell. <laughs> And that's all. Bobby. That's how you. That, that's where. That's where we're at in 2021. Is mind control. Yeah. All right, Bobby. Bobby, Thank it's so you. much fun to see you, and the show is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Bye, honey. Welcome to today all day. All day. Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of asking. Man, yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah. She gave me the the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the rap of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. My buddy cow cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit <laughs> now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. Doesn't it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yes. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day.
Welcome to Today All Day. Everyone, I'm Chassie Post, and today we're kicking off a brand new shopping experience, our new program, Shop All Day. During each episode, we'll show you the hottest fashion and beauty items in Style Finder, buzzworthy and expert back products and influencer trends, and elevated essentials and better basics. This is Shop All Day Red, White, and Blue Basics. Welcome to Shop All Day. I'm Chassie Post, Yahoo Contributing Editor, and we are so excited to show you some products to start your summer off right. We're diving in with everything you need for your patriotic celebration next week. And see the QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. And we've created a new text to shop feature. Simply text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's jump in with pool and beach essentials that'll complement your 4th of July bash with a little red, white, and blue. Okay, so we're gonna start with bathing suits and I am so excited about this one. When I saw the price, my jaw almost dropped on the floor. But let me tell you what I really love about this suit. First of all, it's got two of the biggest summer swim trends in one. So this asymmetric one shoulder, huge trend you're gonna see everywhere. But this fun ruffle, I love a ruffle for summer. So this detail is another huge trend this summer you're gonna see everywhere. But it doesn't stop there. I mean, this suit actually has two secret weapons hidden in here. It's got a mesh tummy control panel, which thank you, thank you, thank you, right? And it's also got this ruched detailing here, which is really figure flattering. Okay, so we found you the bathing suit, but now let's move on. This cover-up is the number one best-selling cover-up on Amazon, over 12 thousand ratings and I tell you these stats because I love the stats because I love to see what people are really into and what they're buying I get FOMO and I want to know so what I love about this is it's kind of how I want to look on the beach it is effortless it's cool you throw it over your bathing suit it is a perfect cover-up right I mean it's got this deep V can you see how cool it is sort of the roll up you push up the sleeves on the side and it's cut up you know, on the legs, so it's super flattering. But what also is great about this cover-up is it kind of does triple duty. So it's perfect, you throw it on when you're at the beach or the pool, but you can take this little cover-up and it can totally be a dress. I mean, you throw it on with a slide or a tunic, you put it on over your shorts or a jean, and it really works. Um, I also really like that it is size inclusive. So it goes from extra small to 3XL, and the fabric is super comfortable, so you're not gonna be hot in it. So this is a winner for sure. But <laughs> next, I cannot believe these adorable little flip-flops. So look at these bow jelly flip-flops. Do you guys remember jellies? I loved them. What I love about it is this little oversized bow, I mean, it elevates it from flip-flop to <laughs> sandal status. I mean, this can go anywhere. Super duper cute. All right, so next, look at these canvas totes. I, I just couldn't believe it when I saw them. They are so, so fun, right? Like these graphic totes, they totally have attitude. And this has been a big trend, you know, having uh, phrases and words, but they really sort of capture the feeling of right now because we all want to get away right now that we can travel. But how cute is that? Poolside or weekend vibes, getaway. But what I like about this so much is it's really high quality. So it's got the canvas and it's got, you know, real leather handles, which you almost never see for the price. And it's a perfect size. This was such an exciting find for me. All right, so dad hats. <laughs> Dad baseball caps. This dad trend, I love it. This little hat 
I mean, it may be a dad hat in front, but check it out. You know, business in front, ponytail party in back. So your ponytail or your messy bun, you can stick through the back. It's cotton, it's great for throwing it in your beach or your pool bag. They come in such fun colors from denims to tie dye, solids and more. And for the price, I mean, super duper affordable. Another super duper huge hair accessory trend this season is the bandana. And we have seen tons of celebs, both guys and girls work this look, but I don't know if you've ever tried to sort of perfectly tie a bandana. It is not easy. So I am thankful for both of these little shortcuts. So first up we have, you know, the top knot headband. And the top knot headband is probably the number one hair accessory trend over the past two years. So these are super cute. So this is one style, but another way to get in on that bandana trend is the rabbit ear. Now, I love the rabbit ear. You know when you see people and it looks like they've tied the bandana? Well, that's a lot harder than it looks. This is tied for you and there's little wiring here in the ears. So you can stick it up if you're feeling festive. You can lay it down if you wanna be a little bit more low key. Six of these for the price. You can give to friends, how cute is that? Okay, so now that we've sort of got our looks together, we've got a little kit that's gonna help us take care and you know protect our skin. And this is from Sunbum. It is a great sun care kit. And I love this company. What you're gonna get in this little kit is the SPF 30 um, Moisturizing Sunscreen Lotion. And this is the sunscreen that really started it all for Sunbum. Their fans say that it smells like summer. And I gotta say, I do love a, the good smell of like a good suntan lotion. Um, it brings back a lot of memories. But you're also gonna get their great little SPF 30 um, sunscreen lip balm, and they've got a new uh, flavor coming out to protect your kisser uh, this year. And also their cool down after sun lotion, which is aloe and vitamin E, and it's so, so, so refreshing and hydrating, so it feels great. And last but not least, I've got to tell you guys, this little miracle is called the Stila Save the Day Eye and Lip Perfector. And what it is, it is a makeup remover stick. So <laughs> just in time for summer, I can't tell you how many times I've walked out the door and I think I look all really cute and then I see a mirror and I see that my makeup has melted down my face. So this comes in really handy because on one side, it's got this little gel, so you just wipe it on and then um, swipe it on and then you wipe it off. You don't need any water. And it's also got this precision tip. So, you know, if you're trying to do that little cat eye, it helps you sort of clean up and make sure that you get it just right. It's from Stila, which is a brand that, you know, makeup lovers just are, uh, you know, obsessed with. And so this is the perfect thing to have on hand during the summer to make sure you know, we all make mistakes, right? But it's a quick cleanup. So let's run through these products one more time and you can scan the QR code on your screen to get instant access or text shop to the number below to see all the products on the show. We've got the asymmetric ruffle swimsuit. We've got the bathing suit cover up. We've got the jelly bow flip flops. The hold everything tote. The dad baseball cap the bandana top knot headband and the rabbit ear headband. We got the sun bum travel sun care kit and the Stila save the day eye and lip perfector. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Adriana Brock is talking all things summer hair with celebrity stylist and global creative director at Color Wow, Chris Appleton. So stay tuned. Right now on NBC News Now, They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, uh, violence and persecution in their home countries.
Killer Row, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. I'm rolling up my sleeves for science, so I'll survive if I contract this virus. For family dinners, family vacations, family anything. For traveling somewhere beyond my living room. And for the Rebels, there is no greater feeling than being in the stadium and cheering on Ole Miss. And now it's your turn. Roll up your sleeves, America. Plan your vaccine, because every shot counts. Visit planyourvaccine.com and make your plan. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Killer Row, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, Shop Today Editorial Director, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, celebrity trendsetters, and the buzziest influencers on the internet. They're going to share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And we're kicking it off with celebrity hairstylist and the global creative director of Color Wow, Chris Appleton. He's here to share all of his tips and tricks for getting amazing hair this summer and to show us some of the brand new products from Color Wow. And don't forget, there's that QR code at the bottom of your screen. Just use the camera on your phone and scan it to shop these products. You can also text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're featuring today. Hey Chris, how are you? Hey, I'm so good, how are you? Good, it's so good to see you. I'm so excited because you are known as the king of hair. You are the man behind some of the most famous women's hair. You have over 1.8 million followers on Instagram. You must get requests like every single day for hair tutorials and you know style advice. What is your number one most requested hair tutorial? I think women want to know basics. They want to know how to give the hair a good blower, how to give the hair just like bouncy, healthy, glossy looking, you know, shine. You know, like it's a look they want to master. Probably one of the most watched videos on my YouTube channel is Jello Super Bowl. Oh. More, you know, that's definitely a look. You know, yeah. she had a lot of hair, a lot of bounce. Um, but if you tailor that down to, you know, every day, people just love that bouncy kind of sexy hair. You are the global creative director for Color Wow, and there's a brand yes. new product that just came out. It's called Extra Large, and it's a bombshell voluminizer. So talk to me a little bit about this product and how women at home can use it to get great hair. When you walk, your hair should walk with you. And I think a lot of women struggle to get the volume in there. It can flop, it can go flat. So I think what was great about this is the fact that it really, really amps up the volume, fattens the hair up, but in a way where the hair just moves, it flips over from side to side, it has bounce and shine. So now that we're in summer, there's also two products from Color Wow that I think are really great. I know we've got Dream Coat here, which is like a little raincoat for your hair, and we've also yeah. got this Dream Cocktail, which is a coconut-infused leave-in product. Tell me a little bit about these and why every woman should be using these this summer. Coconut Cocktail is basically like a leave-in treatment for your hair. It's perfect for anyone that has dehydrated or dry hair. You blow dry in the hair and it transforms the texture of hair. Yeah, and what about the Dream Coat? I know this is a Today.com reader favorite, so tell yeah, me a little bit I mean, about that for summer. It's a sealant for hair. It's like an umbrella for your hair that's invisible. It protects any moisture effectively, absorbing into the hair. Then it has, actually has waterproof technology so the water actually bounces off the hair it can't ruin your style it's kind of the secret behind a lot of my looks you know transforming that really silky glossy hair um and, and keeping it 
think is one of the most important things, especially in, like I said, if you're in you know humid atmospheres or if your hair tends to frizz or it doesn't hold the style. Yes, it is the best for frizz and I'm from Miami so I know all about the humidity. Moving on to like the blowout, you said that's sort of like your signature look that you've no you're known yeah. for and with this new product, but talk to me a little bit about your favorite products to get the perfect blowout. We've got the Leandro Limited uh, rollers and we've got the parting oh, tool. Oh yeah, so these are the Leandro yeah. Limited mocha rollers, they stick to everything. There is no extra heat involved, but they do give you a little voluminous kind of a bounce to the hair, which I think is just always, you know, like in fashion. Yeah, it's so cool. It's it's kind of like a classic old school beauty staple that's yes. you're making really popular again. And something that's new, and we just want to mention, you are a paid spokesperson for Leandro Limited, but there is this new product that I am obsessed with, and it's very 2021. It's the parting tool, which gets you that like, Gen Z popular middle part perfectly. Talk to me a little yeah. bit about this one. It's very unique. I've never seen anything like it. Basically like a headband that you just put through do that perfect part. So this is just a great way. And I think a lot of women struggle to get that really clean. For me, it always starts the style off and keeps it looking super professional. That's amazing. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your favorite summer look right now. Like what is on trend? What is the hairstyle of the moment? What well, is everyone excited about? I think, I think what's really come in and I think what is kind of really fun to see a lot of women play with is the curtain bangs. But with the curtain bangs, there's no commitment. You have the face frame. I love that. They can kind of blend into the rest of the hair if you don't want them to be a feature. So curtain bangs are definitely really big this summer. I love it. Thank you so much, Chris. It was so oh great God, seeing you. you. So thank, thank you, you for so sharing much. all these thank products. You. Thank you so much. Have a great day and happy hair days. Let's run through all these products on one more time. And if you saw anything here that you're interested in purchasing, simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we shared on today's show. First up, we've got the Bombshell Volumizer from Color Wow, the Coconut Infused Dream Cocktail, the Dream Coat, the Leandro Limited Velcro Rollers, and the Tokyo Tor Parting Tool. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Next up is Jen Fallick bringing you better basics. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. That's just shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Right now on NBC News Now. Here in Chicago, about 20,000 middle schoolers returning to school today. They also took advantage of existing vaccine distribution networks throughout Alaska. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Shop All Day.
I'm lifestyle expert Jen Fallick here to show you some useful products that will help you host your 4th of July party and any other summer gathering. And see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. And we've created a new text to shop feature. All you gotta do is simply text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's do this. I've got some creative items that help you entertain and stay cool while celebrating. Let's start with products to help you create an epic food spread. First off, you know, grilling is the main event of any 4th of July bash. These are copper grill mats, and it is gonna majorly cut down on post-party maintenance. When you host, sometimes the most annoying thing about hosting a summer barbecue is cleaning the grill afterward, but these are gonna make sure that food is not sticking to the grill, so cleaning becomes a breeze. It protects the grill grates, and it makes sure that when you lift your food off the grill, it doesn't fall apart, because it is so frustrating when you have this perfectly cooked burger, you go to lift it up, and it breaks in half. Even the most expert grill master can have this happen. This is gonna protect you from that. It's also great to use for grilling veggies that can slip through the grates, and it's amazing for keeping flaky fish from falling apart. You know, presentation can be everything. You want it to look good and taste good. Again, these come in a set of three. They're about 16 by 13 inches, and they will work on gas, charcoal, and electric grills. Now, once you've got your perfect burger, you need the perfect condiments to go with it, and this is truly innovative. This is a chilled condiment server, and it keeps your ketchup, mustard, and any other fixings cool during your next outdoor get-together. Simply fill the bottom with ice. It keeps everything nice and cool. You've got five trays on top, and I love that it's got a little door here, so it keeps it protected from any bugs, flies, anything like that. You can keep everything nice and safe inside, and it's gonna keep everything nice and cold. And this server has over 1,200 four-star and up reviews on Amazon. So it is definitely a tried and true essential. Now, gotta get to dessert at the end of the celebration. And this is a tool that's gonna make cooking easier. This tiny waffle maker creates snack-sized, star-shaped waffles in minutes. And I think it's so fun for a summer barbecue to have a little dessert bar where you've got a waffle, you have all the fix-ins, and you know, some fun things to complete the treat. The non-stick four inch cooking surface is really easy to clean too, and the waffles lift up in one step. It heats up quickly and evenly for perfectly cooked mini waffles, and it's so simple to use. Really, your guests can use it themselves, or you can have someone stationed there making them up and everyone cut on top. It's like a modern take on a Sunday bar. There's really no set required. You just plug it in, and you are ready to go. Also, it's compact, so it stores neatly in cabinets and drawers. The last thing I feel like anyone needs is one more bulky appliance to take up a ton of space. This is great, so it just slips right into a drawer. And a bonus, it comes with a recipe guidebook that has plenty of yummy waffle ideas from sweet to savory. Now, you need to take care of the drinks for any good party, and this is the Igloo 60 Quart Roller Portable Cooler. And it is gonna keep up to 90 cans cold in this thing. I love it because it looks retro and I just think the look of it is so cool. It kind of becomes an accessory unto itself as part of the decor, but it also has really modern benefits to it. So it's got oversized wheels, so super easy to roll, and a telescoping handle here. So no matter what your height, you can comfortably wheel it. It's not gonna get stuck in the dirt and it makes it super easy to travel with. Also, I love that it's got cup holders on the top and they're self-draining, so not only can this be your cooler, it can also sort of be your cocktail table. And it's got riser technology. So riser technology means that the bottom is elevated, so it keeps it off of hot surfaces. So again, everything stays cold. This spacious cooler interior features eco-friendly thermocool insulation, plus this next item will really help you and your guests beat the heat. These are Sun Squad personal fans, and they are super affordable, and they come in these adorable designs, too. Not only are they functional for a quick breeze, but they can serve as table decor. You can place one in each place setting to keep guests cool. If you want, you can even find like the letter stickers if your guests' names on them. I love doing that. Um, these are great for the kids as well. And added bonus, these fans will help keep bugs at bay. Just a quick little flick. You get those mosquitoes away. And you can also send your kids home with them at the end of the party as a party favor that they can actually use all summer long. These are a smart bulk buy. They're one of those things that I love to buy a bunch of now, keep them somewhere, and then use them throughout the entire season. 
another awesome thing to buy in bulk, maybe get a couple in case you've got guests over who bring their playful pooches, is this Sun Squad for Target Stripe Cooling Dog Mat. We know that the heat can be a little dangerous for pups and they tend to get very excited and can often overheat themselves. So this mat has a cooling gel insert to help keep your dogs nice and chill out in the sweltering heat. You can put the mat in the freezer or fridge even if you want to, to give it like an extra boost of cooling, but you can also just put it out as is and the gel mat inside is gonna keep it nice and cool. The mat size is really best for dogs that are around like up to 50 pounds in weight. And I love the idea again of having a few of them sort of around so the dogs can play and then they have their little spot to go, cool down, chill out, put a little water next to it when they need a rest. Next up, somewhere for the humans to sit down. We've got these Tommy Bahama chairs and when you need maximum comfort and maximum relaxation, a good quality beach chair is going to be your summer best friend. And these are really, they're not just good for the beach, but you can also use them for your backyard. You can have for barbecue gathering to expand your seating. Because again, sometimes more people show up than you plan for. You want everyone to be comfortable. These are perfect to have on hand. What I love about these chairs, I actually, my family and I own these, is that they're really lightweight. So they're super easy to carry. You can kind of see here, it's got little backpack straps. You can literally swing it over your shoulder like a backpack to be hands-free. And when I'm going anywhere with two kids, I like to be hands-free, so it's key. And another feature that's great about these chairs is that it has five different position options. So for maximum comfort, whether you want to recline and chill or you want to sit up a little bit and read, also, there's a towel bar along the back, so it makes it really easy to keep your towel handy and sand free between swims. You can also store a t-shirt there, store some things in the back, so it keeps everything organized when you're out and about. And then, finally, something else that my family is loving right now are Turkish towels. So if you're hosting a 4th of July bash or really any gathering where there's water involved, Turkish towels are a must. I am really absolutely obsessed with them right now. What I love about these is that they look cool, first of all. You always want towels that look kind of cool when you're storing them. You can roll them up nice and small, so look, we've got the whole pack of sticks right in there. You barely need any space to store them. They're thin, so you might be fooled and think that they don't really get the job done, but you will be shocked. They are so absorbent, they can dry you off in seconds. They themselves dry quickly, too. So these aren't the kinds of towels that someone uses once, throws on the floor, and then you have to keep cutting. You have new ones every few minutes, every time someone gets wet. Instead, this can be the towel that can be used over and over again. They're also naturally sand repellent, so no one's tracking sand and dirt inside when you bring the towels in after a party. Comes in a set of six, fun poppy colors. Like I said, they're really easy to store, and I love the fringe. You can roll them up. I kind of do mine in a basket at home, rolled up with the fringe hanging over. They look super cool, very on trend, kind of with the boho chic design. And you can know which is yours because all different fun colors. No confusing towels between people. You'll be nice and dry, cozy. Also can tie it as a sarong. It's a fun fashion accessory. Side bonus. Lastly, you are gonna wanna remember all of these fun times that you're having this summer with all these great things at all your backyard parties. You need this Printomatic digital instant print camera from Kodak. It's a modern take on a classic instant print concept and you can use it at all your summer parties as an on-demand photo booth. I love to leave something like this on a chair with a basket with fun photo booth props. It kind of cues people in that they should be over there taking fun pictures. And you can encourage your guests to ham it up and snap a pic. The bonus of this kind of activity is that it guarantees that even if you're too busy to take photos, which I feel like always happens when you're hosting, you can still make sure that all these special moments are captured. Kind of get your guests to do the work for you. And we all take so many pictures on our phones, but rarely do we actually have them physically printed. When you have physical prints, you realize how much you miss putting them on walls, giving them to friends, writing notes on them, throwing them into an album. These are gonna give you that fun, nostalgic feeling of actual prints, and they're so easy to use, you guys, that even the kids can get involved. So it becomes an activity that the entire family can enjoy all summer long and beyond. Let's go through these products one more time, and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the copper grill mat, chilled condiment server, the dash waffle maker, the igloo portable cooler, the personal fan, the cooling dog mat, the Tommy Bahama chair, the Turkish towel set, and the Kodak instant print camera. And that is a wrap on all of your better basics and for our show. So we hope some of these items caught your eye today. And if you miss something you like, don't worry. We have got your back. 
Simply text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we shared on today's show. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop All Day for super chic summer style vibes. See you next time. Food in a way unlocks a lot of stories. It's this emotional connection that we get through eating that food that is really irreplaceable. My name is Chitra Agarwal. I'm a co-founder at Brooklyn Deli, where we make sauces and condiments inspired by my family's recipes from India. My name is Katevi, and I'm the chef and owner of Dumpling Club, a weekly subscription service that features a rotating menu of dumplings and Asian dishes. I started Brooklyn Deli in 2014. Our first products at Brooklyn Deli were my achars, which are a staple Indian condiment. They're kind of like this spicy, sour, a little bit sweet. So you add just a little bit and it kind of just makes the dish like amazing. I developed a lot of the recipes for achar using what I was getting in my farm share. So I was making achar from heirloom tomatoes, garlic, gooseberries. I wouldn't say that like, it's authentic Indian food. It's very much inspired by my heritage, but it's authentic to me. My grandfather comes from a region in northern China that, that specializes in dumplings. And to him, dumplings were the perfect food, the best food. I use all sorts of influences in the dumplings. For example, influences from my husband's Austrian side. That's not traditionally how dumplings would be made. I'm learning to be really comfortable with that. In the beginning, I felt like that wasn't truly authentic but I actually now feel that that's very authentic to me and my experience. A labor of love learned from generations before them. The pleating sort of represents on the outside the amount of care that's been put into this food. Whenever we made them as a family, seeing the pleats that my mom or that my grandfather added to the dumplings would remind me that they were the ones who prepared this food for me. father's mother, we were just very close. I can still remember the food that she would give me. I can still taste it. They're kind of like food memories from when I was really young, and those continued on as I visited her every year in India. Every trip, we would be in the kitchen. Growing up, we didn't have regular access to Asian groceries, but I learned about the importance of food from my mom. She would use spaghetti whenever she was making stir-fried noodles. Her creativity, that creative spirit that she had when it came to replicating her home food through whatever ingredients that she had on hand, that's what I feel really inspired by. Both women left stable jobs for their culinary careers. It was a really scary time because, I mean, I had been working for over a decade in positions where I had benefits, I had an ongoing salary that I could count on. I left Google in the fall of 2019, and already that year I was starting to make dumplings, send them around to friends and family, and when I decided to really start in earnest was in February 2020, conveniently one month before the pandemic hit and everything shut down. I didn't have a steady job or an income at that time and whenever I had a spare moment, I'd fold dumplings and then I would stay up all hours editing footage and putting it up on Instagram and we were just trying to survive. Despite the pandemic, their businesses not only survived, but thrived. Our public sales tend to sell out within a few minutes. One time it sold out in less than a minute. For us, 
It's been great because more people want to try the flavors that we're putting out there and want to learn more about Indian food and culture. Everything that I really learned how to make, I learned from different family members. So I feel like in some sense, the Brooklyn Deli recipes also are a way for our family recipes to kind of live on. When my parents came to the States, they really came here with nothing. And I'm super cognizant of that now, that it's a huge privilege to be able to, to do what I love, to go after what I love. And that has come from years of sacrifice and hard work from my parents. And knowing that, I want to take that privilege and make sure that I do something really positive with it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Roll. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Hong Kong traditional wontons are made with um, a smear of pork and a lots of shrimp, usually bite size. The wonton across Asian culture is wrapped in history and family secrecy, recipes often going back generations. My mom always knew I wanted to open a restaurant. I was always saving money to open a restaurant. I didn't know what kind of food I was gonna make or whatever, but I just knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> Maxi Lau's parents wanted to open one too, but without a family recipe of their own, they turned to a friend. She was 49 at the time. She and my dad went to Toronto to learn from the family friend. It was like a secret family recipe that they don't share with anyone. Her parents soon returned, ready and eager to open a restaurant. Told me that, you know, we think we found it. But, you know, we got to negotiate and, you know, see where it goes. And then a couple of months after, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And then that was that. I was, like, there for every appointment, every chemo session, every radiation session, every everything. Yeah. You know, like, she, <clears throat> sorry, I, I, I get a little bit, whew. Um, I was very, very close with my mom. I did everything for my mom, from the medicine, what she's allergic to, all her appointments, it's like embedded in my brain. My mom passed away a week after my 28th birthday. I was on leave of absence from work, and I was like, maybe it's time that, you know, that restaurant dream that I always wanted, you know, to, to happen, maybe, you know, I should put it into place. As family and friends called in to check on Maxie, one had a familiar invite. A family that trained my mom, they did say, hey, listen, if you're willing, want to learn how to make wontons and dumplings and stuff, you know, we're more than happy to teach you. I almost like dropped the phone and I'm like, what? They don't just teach anybody. I just took it like right there and then and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Maxie flew to Toronto just like her mom had done before. Her first lesson, wrapping wontons for hours on end. I remember my trainer, he told me, he was like, um, I don't think you're going to make it. You know, it's been two weeks and you can't even wrap a wonton. Maybe you should just go home. I wanted to cry and I was like, no matter what, Maxie, you get it together. You, you wrap those wontons, you, you make it happen. I'm an expert now, <laughs> wrapping wontons. <laughs> Maxie spent months perfecting her skills, mastering wontons and more. I came home um, and I told my dad, I'm ready. 
we're gonna find a restaurant and open. And he said, you're crazy. First of all, I need to speak with your Sifu and, and find out where you're at because the last time I spoke with you, you were cutting scallions for like a month. Her dad came up with an idea to borrow her aunt's bakery. So by night, she transformed that space into Maxie's Noodle. Like a one-man band, I was in the front, I was in the back, I was cooking, I was prepping, I, I, I did everything. Word of mouth spread quickly around town, eventually to a New York Times food critic. I was super proud and I was like, I was like, oh, mom's proud too. <laughs> I always like have that feeling like mom's looking down. I think magically, like when mom left, she sprinkled some like special powder on me to make me look at it in like a whole different perspective. Don't be depressed. I'm gone. I'm in a better place. I'm not here, but I'm always here in a way. Today, Maxie has opened her own restaurant, making her own memories surrounded by old ones. The scientific breakthrough that helped create today's COVID vaccines was unlocked here at the University of Pennsylvania by two unassuming scientists. For years, their work went unnoticed and dismissed. Talk to me about how skeptical people were about the value of RNA. I, you know, I, I don't uh, know, do, did we listen to them? Not really, you know, we... <laughs> I mean, everybody was skeptical, but we didn't care. Born in Hungary, one of two daughters of a butcher, Dr. Katie Kuriko came to the U.S. to pursue science in the 1980s. But by 1998, her funding at the University of Pennsylvania dried up. I tried to get uh, grants, but I couldn't get the grants, and so I was not, uh, uh, not promoted. Faced with losing her faculty job, she met Dr. Drew Weissman, who was photocopying journal articles in this building. We would fight over the photocopier, and that's how we met. And what did you see in Dr. Carrico? When Katie and I would sit and talk, we just kept thinking of more and more things that we could do, and you know, it, it kept us going you know, in the face of all of the setbacks. He worked on vaccines. She worked on messenger RNA. Together, they found a way to create a vaccine that got past the body's defenses, but still prompted the immune system to make antibodies to fight disease. Physically, we were shoulder to shoulder at the bench. And uh, Drew was working on the cell, I was making the RNA. And so it was very joyful, shoulder to shoulder collaboration. Dr. Weissman, how did the breakthrough eventually become acknowledged and become the vaccines that have saved millions and millions of people and potentially billions of people? We're, we're laughing because we're remembering how bad it was. In, in 2005, we published our paper that's now considered, you know, the, the game changer that, that identified modified RNA. But the acclaim didn't come. They really didn't care about it. And it wasn't until around 2008, 2009, when people started to see the potential. So from 1998 to 2008, 2009, all those years, you were in the wilderness. Does yeah. you give a talk or? Took another 10 years. <laughs> now their discovery is leading to even more vaccines for AIDS, Ebola, Zika. It's truly a plug and play. You can take out one coding sequence and put in anything you want. So it takes you a couple weeks to make a new vaccine. And now they're talking about a Nobel Prize. How does that make you feel? I don't think about that I will get it. It is like, I focused always on the work, and that's what excites me. No, what do you yeah, think? I mean, we, we, we both share that. So my, my, my family always gets mad at me because you know, they want to talk about the great success that we've had. But I, I've already moved on to the next thing. Today, a crowd of students follow them, asking for pictures. Carico reminds them that glory is not the true reward. You have to enjoy so that uh, it is very important that you have to be happy when you are doing these things. And the joy of discovery. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Karika was recently honored in her native Hungary. And after years in the academic wilderness, she is a scientific rock star. She and her teammate, Dr. Weissman, remain completely unaffected, amazingly humble. They've already moved on, as he says, to search for new discoveries for the joy of it and the benefit of untold numbers of people around the world. Oh, what a duo. It's incredible to think about them toiling away, exactly. no one believing this little idea that they had, and 15 years later, they're saving the world, literally. 
Exactly. And a lot of it, well, the skepticism was she was onto something and she was a woman and she just was not taken seriously. No, no, but wow. Andrea, what a story. <laughs> Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Half of all U.S. adults now fully vaccinated. Al is in Cleveland for our Reopening America series. This is the greatest location in the nation. Music is back. Y'all were exactly what we needed. Our week-long journey begins here in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky. In Cleveland. Our Across America journey, reporting on an America rebuilding and reimagining a future after the pandemic. Breaking news tonight, the ceasefire in the Middle East after 11 days of deadly violence. Richard Engel is on the ground. Do you think there's a connection between policing and racism? How narrow a window do you have to really get kids back where we would want them to be? NBC Nike News with Lester Holt. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Congratulations to Lester Holt, the most trusted TV news anchor in America, on receiving the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award for a career dedicated to excellence in journalism. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. It does seem as if this White House doesn't want to bring a lot of high-profile attention to the issue. What efforts might depoliticize vaccine hesitancy? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Killer Roll, the new podcast from Dateline. Subscribe now wherever you listen. At the start of the pandemic, as cities shut down across the country, these three women carried on at work, at home, and on the road. Meet Kiersey Rothlander, who travels across the country as a professional truck driver for a Missouri-based company. Mail carrier Jacinia Santiago is a mother of one from Massachusetts. And Morgan Arledge, a line cook at a restaurant in Little Rock, Arkansas. Tell me what it was like, you know, the country goes into lockdown those first few weeks. What was it like for you? I was honestly a little bit jealous of people who got to stay home, um, at least for the first few months. But I also struggled with this feeling of I need to be grateful that I, I get to continue to work and get to continue to have that money coming in. I would leave my child with her grandma and then I would go pick her up. There's no hugging, there's no kissing, there's no playing. First thing I popped into my head was, I can't go home now. You don't want to go home and risk infecting somebody. It's a mental struggle. And just our needs weren't met. They had the PPE, the face mask. We didn't. And we couldn't get them from anywhere. So we were using t-shirts. Then you're taking paper towels and rolling them up and putting rubber bands on. There would be some people who would say, you know what, forget this. I'll just go home and wait it out. What made you decide to keep working? Honestly, I considered just quitting my company and then I said, if everybody just goes home, who's going to eat? You will get your medication, I promise you. You will get your food and water, you, I promise you. And there are people who are getting too close or they're refusing to wear masks. There have been multiple guests who have come into our restaurant and they don't want to wear a mask. Our managers confront them and their people are just irate about it. COVID-19 hasn't just affected their jobs, it's hit their families hard, too. Morgan, I know in September, your grandfather um, got sick with COVID and passed just a few weeks later, which is just heartbreaking for, to, to hear. It's hard. I, I have to keep going for my daughter. I have to keep going to work every day. I didn't have an opportunity to really sit back and process my loss and my grief. And last March, Jacinia was among eight people in her family who had coronavirus all at once. It was scary. It was like every day someone was positive until all eight of us were positive. And it's just me and my little one, my three-year-old at home. They say sometimes when it rains, it pours. And Jacinia, I know you and your daughter found yourself in a place where you were without a home in December after an apartment fire. In my head, I'm like, 
again, something else again, but always keeping forward. I mean, with everything that you've been through, you still, you're still smiling in this moment. What, yes. ge what gives you that smile? I'm grateful to have a job, to be working. There could be worse, right? Let's talk about mental health. Is it a challenge sometimes doing all of this in the midst of a pandemic? It was challenging to begin with, but putting the pandemic on top of that, yeah, absolutely. There are days that I struggle to get up sometimes, you know, just crippling grief. You kind of isolate yourself, which is difficult and it can be depressing for truck drivers because we are in our trucks like 20 something hours a day to begin with. Is there anything that makes you feel better? A lot of the trucking companies start setting up employee assistant programs that you could give a call and it really helps. Do you feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel? I think if everybody does their part and gets the vaccine, then we'll be on the other side of this soon. What do you say when people say the three of you and so many others are heroes? I personally don't feel like a hero. I'm I'm doing what I have to do for myself and for my family and to keep my job. It's hard for me to accept that title. I don't I don't see myself as a hero. It's other essential workers, it's you guys who are out and doing the work that needs to be done. Do you ever let that sink in that it's just the work must continue? Absolutely. Yeah, I don't feel like a hero. This is my chosen profession and we have to do our job. I really enjoyed my chat with those women. It's yeah. like you said, we do a lot of celebrities and, and you know, yeah. and others on this show, but just real women day in and day out. And again, especially in those early days when everybody was home and we were yep. depending on all those delivery drivers, um, you know, they're delivering food, our mail. Yeah, know, so I don't care what they say, they're heroes. Kudos yeah. to them. Right now on NBC News Now. They've done things like installing cameras to help alert Border Patrol to people crossing. They are escaping a number of conditions there, of uh, violence and persecution in their home countries. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. Yes, yes, yes. Shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Ready actors. An indie horror film, a talented young actress, and a deadly shot. Dateline's newest podcast, Killer Roll. Action! Subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts. This is about 50 votes. If you can't get bipartisanship here, where are you going to get it? If China decided to cover this up, can we ever actually get a definitive answer? What happens if we don't act on police reform this year? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Tonight, the CDC's new outdoor mask guidelines. What change that allowed this new recommendation to be made? If we do nothing, what happens to a city like Houston? You're going to repeat this movie over and over again. NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. I want every woman to understand that they have something to give. Tara Alexander is a New Orleans native who has a passion for ministry and music but she says her biggest joy is helping other women succeed. I will always say my mom's one of the best people I have ever known. She has, as long as I can remember, been doing outreaches for people and, and for women. I learned how to serve community and how to empower other people, I believe, from those who came before me. My mother is absolutely my greatest example in that because my mom worked at Tulane School of Business and she would encourage the professors to come to the community at the church to give free grant writing classes. I was a child in those classes. Tara created Shiro in 2015 to empower women to build their businesses through workshops and networking events. I realized that there were so many of my friends who were just brilliant, and I wanted to put them all in the room so we could exchange strengths in order to make a bigger impact in our communities. I got the word she wrote from my daughter. She was writing a paper in school, and she said, my mom is my Shiro. Tara held her first conference in a church. Today, it reaches 600 women all over the United States. We empower women to impact community. 
they use their skills, their gifts, their talents, and the things that they've been blessed with to be a blessing to others. I don't think there's anything that a woman can't do. Rosalind Woodfox attended her first Shiro conference two years ago. It doesn't matter if you're a stay-at-home mom, you're important. And if you are the one that's running the business, you can take those gifts to help someone else. Alita Butler Blue has held many jobs, from waitress to caregiver, but Tara encouraged Alita to dream big and start her own catering business. She literally came to our house and sat me down at the same computer we are right now and walked us through every step of the way. And anytime she would have event, she would have us be a vendor at the event, pushing our business. When nobody was behind us, she always was there for us. Tara was also there for Alita when she lost her daughter to COVID. My sister and Shiro really been a blessing, you know, to us. We really like stick together, just encouraging each other. If you're going through something, you know, you got a sister you could call. Janae Webster is a pageant queen. She won the crown for Miss Black America, Louisiana in 2017. Today, Janae gives back with her nonprofit, Women Sharpen Women. She provides resources to single mothers and mentors to children. So Ms. Tara is very supportive. She is someone who sees the best in you and not only sees it, she supports it and makes sure you understand whatever you have to give in this world. Make sure it's not just for yourself, but you're also uplifting your community as well. What makes me excited is that I get to see women who have gifts and skills that they've been keeping to themselves, share it and come alive. So that's why I push women, because when we push one woman, we can change a whole generation. We're so happy. <laughs> Tara is here with her daughter, Tiara, who's the program <laughs> development director for Shiro. Oh my God, look, I'm a proud New Orleanian in my soul. I'm a little prouder in this moment. Y'all are rocking it. Uh, Tara, why, why, look, a lot of people would have had their success and said, well, good for me. Why do you, are you spending so much time paying it forward? You know, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me here. I am just excited to be here, and this is an honor. I get to get, uh, I get to give, and I, I had to think about this long and hard. I thought it was just because I wanted my smart friends in the room, but in all actuality, our why is so much bigger than our want. What I believe is that I've been blessed to be a blessing, and one of those blessings is that God spared my life. He allowed me to just live and to be able to do the things that I dreamt about doing from a child. And what I wanted to do was make sure that people around me had that opportunity to dream because your dream can bring you through so much. I had a challenge in my own health some years ago and I decided to live on purpose and I wanted everybody around me to live on purpose. You know, Tiara, what's it like <laughs> watching your mom? And I know you're following in her footsteps. It is incredible. My mom is one of my favorite people in the world. And, she, <laughs> and she's just so much fun to watch and to emulate. Um, well, you know what, Tara, we got a little surprise for you. We, we we talked to a few people whose lives you changed, but we have a few more who just wanted to wave and say, hey, 30 more women who wanted to say thank you. Every single per not person on this big board you helped throughout the years. They're all together. They got signs of love. Yeah, and one of those women we want to spotlight is Tracy Scott. She was in a homeless shelter for seven months, and you helped her through that time. Tracy, hey. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Tracy. <laughs> what Hi, does this woman right there mean to you? Life, everything. <laughs> um, she taught us how to give, no matter where you are, um, give. And she, I met her at a, a pivotal moment in my life when I really needed someone to look into who I really was. I didn't know who I was. I had a lot of hurt going on through my divorce and everything, living in a homeless shelter, didn't have a job. And um, the second week of being there, I met her. I listened to everything that she had to say, and she took me out of, out of the state of mind that I was in where I felt helpless. And I, began, I learned how to give, uh, mm. to give back to the women in the shelter mm -hmm. and giving back to the women in the shelter. Um, she taught me that when you're hurt, you can only give hurt. But when you're healed, 
you can only help others to heal. And that's something that I'll remember for the rest of oh, my life. And I want to thank you, Tara, because you taught me how to help women to heal. Right now, I'm sitting with a young lady who is an entrepreneur. And it was because you saw something in me that I could give back to others. And now I don't only just give to entrepreneurs, I help homeless women who don't have money to pay for a night in the shelter. It's all because you taught me how to give for within and I appreciate you wow. so much. Wow. We, so, we are so moved. Look what you've done. You created a circle of love and giving. And, and in addition to all this, Tara, you and your lovely daughter, I was just, um, I just clicked on iTunes and your music is all over that too. Your beautiful, heavenly music is all over iTunes. You're, you're spreading, you're spreading your goodness everywhere. Savannah, there they are. Look, oh my oh, gosh, our Today All Day them. viewers. Oh, a big yes. virtual hug. Hope you all are having fun on this Thursday. Yeah, happy Thursday. We're glad you joined us for our digital show. Stop it's trying to do that. Today. today in 30, this is a 30-minute blend of the highlights, the best from all four hours of our show. Okay, we are going to begin with some real serious stuff. That devastating partial building collapsed near Miami as we hear from eyewitnesses and a resident, one who was rescued from